Sports presents University of Miami Hurricane Football. The Hurricanes, undefeated and top-ranked, travel to Ann Arbor, Michigan to go against perennial Big Ten contender, the Michigan Wolverines. the beautiful University of Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Take a look at this crowd. 104,000 are packed into the stands here at the University of Michigan, and it can indeed be a very tough order for the University of Miami football team. And a good afternoon. I'm Spencer Ross for Cat Sports. The Hurricanes, 2-0, top rank in the nation, go against the Wolverines this afternoon, a team that under Bo Schembechler has never lost a home opener. They're 14-0-1. The Hurricanes with two victories on their belt. And joining us on the U of Miami telecast this season will be Steve Grody. Steve, 2-0 against 0-0. Is that an advantage or perhaps a disadvantage for the University of Miami? Well, the Hurricanes are playing their third game in less than two weeks. I think going into the second ball game against Florida was certainly a disadvantage. Uh, very little preparation time. They've had plenty of time to get ready for this ball game. They've had two games to work out the kinks, evaluate their team, and get over the first game jitters. Uh, Michigan, despite their record in opening uh, games, uh, it plays far below uh, their potential. So I think it's to Miami's advantage. Bo Schembechler, the experienced coach. This is 16th year at the University of Michigan. On the other side, it's Jimmy Johnson, who came over from Oklahoma State to take over the reins of the University of Miami Hurricanes. We talk about the Miami offense. We talk about the great defense that the Wolverines consistently have had under Coach Bo Schembechler. And that's the question we asked him. Bo, is it just offense against defense? No, I think, um, you know, offense, defense, kicking are all going to be a factor. I would say that uh, uh, their offense is the strength of their team. Um, we're not sure what's the strength of our team yet. Uh, we have some defensive veterans back, but we also have some pretty good offensive players. So we'll just have to wait and see that. We'll have to wait and see, and just what about this University of Michigan offense? Well, it won't be much different than we've seen. I mean, they've run the same offense for years and years. However, they are uh, operating with a new quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. Now, uh, they say a lot of good things about him, but that quarterback position in Michigan is a very difficult one. Uh, it's a very intricate offense. We're going to ask him to throw the ball a little bit more this year. Uh, the crowd's tough on quarterbacks here. With 105 people in his first game ever, uh, I, it'll be interesting to see exactly how he performs. Okay, Jimmy Johnson taking over a team uh, which was a national champion last year. They are now 2-0 on the season, and I asked Coach Johnson if his expectations for the season have changed now that he's 2-0 against two tough opponents. Well, of course, uh, my expectations don't really ever change because we expect to win every time we go out on the field. W win every time they go out on the field. The Hurricanes 2-0. They've won 13 straight, the longest in the nation. And they're coming up against a tough University of Michigan Wolverine football team before nearly 105,000 people. We'll get back with more. The starting lineups coming up. The opening kickoff just moments away from the University of Michigan's Wolverine Stadium right after this. They are the defending national champions. The undefeated University of Miami Hurricanes and their success rides on this young man, number 20, the quarterback, all everything, Bernie Kosar. So I don't know what you can say about Bernie that hasn't been said. Uh, he probably reads defenses even better this year than he did last season. He's the kind of kid that seems to make the right decision every time on every play. And of course, who'll forget this great touchdown throw last week that beat Florida. The pass caught by Eddie Brown with just seconds remaining. The Hurricanes coming from behind. Their defense has helped also. Bruce Fleming, linebacker, a first-year starter from Monica, Pennsylvania, and he's played very well this far. Well, he's a very intelligent kid. He'll call the signals all afternoon. He maybe isn't as physical as you might like, but he's one of those guys that's always around the football, gets himself into the right place at the right time consistently, and what more can you ask from a linebacker? When you speak of linebackers, you start speaking defense, and you have to start talking about the University of Michigan Wolverines because Bo Schembechler's team has long relied on the defense, and this year, absolutely no exception. Senior defensive tackle, Kevin Brooks. Well, Brooks is one of those kids that has the uh, ability uh, to be in all everything. Uh, he's got great range, uh, tremendous movement. 
you'll see him right here uh, read the play very well, just waits and comes up with this uh, uh, safety against Northwestern last year. Defensively, that's the story for the University of Michigan. They have three preseason All-Americans all on the defensive side. Mike Mallory, the senior linebacker, who appears to be all over the field all game long. Well, that's what they count on from their linebackers at Michigan. He's the best of the, of the bunch this year. He's a gamer. He'll find a way to get to the football. You'll see him here uh, coming in on the blitz, certainly today against Kosar. Any kind of defensive pressure on that pass rush uh, will be uh, a key to their victory. Mallory and Brooks are both seniors. The third preseason All-American in the lineup for the University of Michigan Wolverines, a junior, the wide cornerback, number 30, Brad Cochran, who intercepted five passes in the 1983 season. Well, they're absolutely counting on an outstanding year from this kid. Uh, he's a kid that, that holds together that defensive backfield. Uh, he has outstanding range, smart, runs well. And as you see right there, he's got that great anticipation, which uh, anybody who intercepts five passes has to have. You can see the University of Miami Hurricane. Coach Jimmy Johnson, they have hit the field. The coin toss will be coming up shortly. 104,000 people on hand here. This is the 54th consecutive sellout for the University of Michigan. There's Mike Mallory standing on the right. One super football player as we get ready for the opening coin toss. This is the inaugural, the first game ever between these two teams, Miami and the University of Michigan. They'll play here again in 1988. If you think that this, uh, this series was put together because of Miami's uh, recent success, no way. These things are, this contract, was, I believe, was made in 1976. Originally, it was scheduled for home and home. It has been switched now, and Miami will return, uh, as you said, in, eight, in 1984. Well, the way to fortune is the University of Miami football program are going right now. The next contract they sign, I'm sure, will include a game at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. This is the first meeting ever between these two teams. We mentioned the starting quarterback for uh, the University of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Beckler says he is going to throw the ball a little bit more this year. I think that they expect to throw the ball between uh, uh, 25 to 35 percent of the time. Certainly that'll be dictated uh, by the game itself. The coin toss. Michigan has won the toss. They've refused to take their choice now. They'll, they'll wait till the second half and uh, get their, their choice then whether they would like to receive or defend a goal starting the second half. That'll be Miami's decision whether they would like to kick off, defend a goal, or, re or receive. Well, you can be sure Miami is going to elect to receive right here. It'll be the only choice they'll have to make for the last this ball game. So the Hurricane will take the opening kickoff in this ball game against the University of Michigan Wolverines. A long conference going on. And Miami will receive. So the Hurricanes elect to receive the opening kickoff. And we'll have the opening kickoff coming up in just moments from right now. The Miami Hurricanes against the Michigan Wolverines. And we'll be right back. University of Michigan has hit the field. We await the Miami Hurricanes. They're on the sidelines right now. Bernie Kosar, 25 for 33, 300 yards last week against the University of Florida. The opening day record for the University of Michigan, that's pretty impressive. The fact that they have played over uh, 100 games. 85, 13, and 2 equals 100 games, and of course, most of them have taken place right here in Michigan. Well, we mentioned that they, they notoriously start slow early in the year, don't play up to their potential, but let me add, too, that they don't generally play a quality opponent like Miami early, so uh, look for them to be much more ready to play a, a good football game today, I would, I would think. There are the Hurricanes gathered around head coach uh, Jimmy Johnson. Straight victories, 13 of them. That's the longest victory streak in the nation. And, of course, the two in a row this season. And in their last five victories, the Hurricanes coming from behind in the fourth quarter to win. And in talking to defensive coordinator uh, Gary Moeller for Michigan, he thinks that, that this may be the best offensive team that uh, Michigan has played since he's been uh, on the staff. 
and that goes back quite a few years. Interesting story in Sports Illustrated about Dan Marino and Bernie Kosar. A quote from the head coach of Tulane, who coached Kosar, uh, who coached Marino, that is, at the, uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Is um, he mentioned the fact that he could be the best drop pack passer in the history of pro football? And the next question was, but is he the best quarterback Miami. in Miami? <laughs> <laughs> Here are our officials today. John Nealon, the referee. The umpire is Dennis Riggs. The head linesman, Tom Ranson. The line judge, Joe Pipkin. The field judge is Larry Nemers. And the back judge is Tom Klein. And we are just about set for the opening kickoff here at the University of Michigan. Bob Bergerod will tee it up for the Michigan Wolverines back deep for the University of Miami. Number 21, J.C. Penny to receive the opening kickoff along with number 37 back along the back line. But that is uh, J.C. Penny getting set to receive the opening kickoff for the University of Miami. The crowd's a little bit quiet right now, but they're going to start coming to their seats prior to the opening kickoff of college football tradition. I've seen a number of opening games uh, in this stadium, and I've never seen uh, a crowd this excited and this loud uh, at, at this place for an opening. Todd Sloppy is the kicker. David Kinai takes the kickoff, and it'll be down, and Miami will put it into play. So the Hurricanes take over here on their first possession with Bernie Kosar to kick Todd Sloppy, replacing Bergeron at the last moment as the kickoff. The starting lineup for the University of Miami Hurricanes, Bernie Kosar is quarterback for the 37, Darrell Oliver, Alonzo Highsmith, the running back, Stanley Shakespeare, the flanker, the foot end is Eddie Brown, Willie Smith, the tight end, already 15 receptions on the season. Paul Bertasilli, Juan Comandiero is out of the lineup. He's replaced by Mike Moore, and it's first and ten now for the University of Miami Hurricanes from their own 20-yard line. Double wing formation, and coach by the throw. Stanley Shakespeare has it at the 40, taken down at the 41-yard line by Tony Gann. So, immediately to the air, immediately 21 yards for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Just ran a slant pattern, and then another guy deep on the left-hand side played off the safety, and Kosar comes out firing right away. Michigan uh, consistently has had trouble with a good passing attack. This ball club uh, is a 50-50 type team. They'll run and pass. Once again, this is probably the best offensive team that uh, the Michigan fans have ever seen come into this stadium. As we check out the Wolverine defense, first and ten for the Hurricanes from the 41. Kosar again, Shakespeare again, bumps out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Brad Cochran in the stop. The game is six. It'll be second down and four. Well, you see what this attack will do. We haven't seen him run the ball, but even on the pass, they'll, they'll throw to all receivers, uh, which stretches that defense. It, it's, you end up with a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage, even in zone situations. Uh, they hit you down the middle to the side. Uh, they're so well coached, and they keep a defense off balance with a tremendous play calling. The theory, of course, you set up uh, the pass by the run. Miami is setting up the run via the pass route. Alonzo Highsmith is the lone setback, and he gets his first call of the ball game, and it's a first down for the Hurricanes. As Highsmith moves into Michigan territory, Rodney Lyles and Dorland Rivers combining on the stop. First and ten for Miami. Big hole off the right side of the line that time for the University of Miami. Well, these are three perfect blocks. You see him get out on the uh, on the uh, uh, on Anderson, knock him right off his feet, and nobody touches him until he gets into the secondary. Cochran there to make the stop. Uh, it's a very swarming Michigan defense, but uh, they were blocked along the front line that time. Here's Bernie Kosar once again. And this one is complete. Out of the fumble. Field. It's fumbled by Oliver. Let's see who has it. It's picked up by the University of Michigan. Now Oliver, a sophomore from Federal Point, Florida, on the fumble, and the Wolverines have the ball. Rodney Lyles with a real hard hit. Watch number 80 come in and clobber Darrell Oliver. Once again, great pass protection. All the time in the world to throw. Very good coverage that time. This is just an excellent tackle. Uh, got his hand in there, hit the ball, and once again, this is where the pursuit on the defensive end comes into play. When there's a loose ball, there's four Michigan people there ready to recover. So Michigan has the football, and we have played just a minute. The Hurricanes have moved into Wolverine territory. The running back, Gerald White, and Bob Berryman. Berryman 
Here's the up back. Here's White. And White gets some good yardage off the left side of the line. Four yards on the carry to midfield. It'll be second down and six. Coming up for the University of Michigan, Jerome Brown in on the stop, a sophomore from Brooksville. Let's check the offense. Jim Harbaugh, a sophomore, his first start. Gerald White, Bob Perryman are the back. Steve Johnson, the flankers, and Dean, the split end. The tight end is Tim Nelson, their leading receiver last year. Up front, Miller, Sabacino, Bolonos, James, and Hammerstein. Second down and six coming up for the Michigan Wolverines. This is White again on the quick pitch. And White this time is hit for a loss. Joe Colbrand, the right end, number 48, the senior from Merritt Island, Florida, comes in on the stop. So a third down and six coming up now for Michigan. Ken Calhoun also came up and, and gave support that time. That's a tall sweep that uh, Florida hurt them uh, with so much. There's the defense for the University of Miami. Bruce Fleming and John McVay are the linebackers. And the defensive secondary for the Hurricanes, they've got three very, very young players out there. Three first-year starters. Third down coming up now for Michigan. They're at midfield, third and seven. Harbaugh's first pass coming up. And on the sidelines, and Dean has the first down for the Michigan Wolverines. Greg Jones in on the stop, first and ten for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, Vince Bean has been the most consistent wide receiver Michigan's had over the over the last couple of years. Uh, let's take a look at this. Michigan, uh, they get great pass blocking, just a three-man rush. Three received, four receivers out on the pattern. Three were covered, took his time as a confidence builder for a guy starting his first game. Nice pass, a long out, first down. And through to the experienced man. Vince Dean, a four-year starter from Southfield, Michigan, who caught 29 passes last year. This time, the flip screen goes to Gerald White. And White breaking the tackle and moving down to the 35-yard line before he stopped by John McVay. See, that was a problem last week for Miami. Too many missed tackles. They missed 35 tackles last week for a total of 97 extra yards. 26 of those came in the second half. They thought maybe it was a, a fatigue factor. Uh, you'll see this play right here now. They only sent three, re three receivers out. Um, they can make a great play. I'll tell you what, you know, he's a big 6'3", six, 260-pounder, uh, six, so you know um, White has got a lot of strength to break that tackle. Second down and five. Perryman straight up the middle. He's got a first down. Bob Berryman in the lineup for the University of Michigan Wolverines, replacing the starter Eddie Garrett at the fullback position. Garrett suffering with a knee injury, and Big Junior Cortez comes in at the stop, but it's the first time. Well, if there's one thing Michigan would love to do in this ball game, it would be to have a couple nice long drives. Ironically, their offense would be their best defense today by keeping Kosar and company on the sideline. Ball Jokic wide to the top of your screen. And here's the handoff, straight up the middle it goes to Gerald White, and White picks up two or three yards. John McVay in on the stop, the ball will be spotted at the 37, so we'll call it a gain of two, second and eight coming up at the Wolverine. Well, that Michigan offense features the tailback. Gerald White is a, a slasher. He, he breaks tackles, has excellent hands as a receiver. Uh, Rick Rogers, the 1,000-yard man from last year. Don't expect to see him to play today. He's had some academic difficulties and you know, just don't expect to see, see him uh, in the lineup. 1,002 yards last year. A tough man to lose. It is now second and eight for Michigan. Little play action. And it's complete and out of bounds for Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson, the flanker back from Youngstown, Ohio, a junior. Only a fourth career reception and it is Michigan a big first down. I'll tell you what, Harbaugh looks like he's accepted the challenge from Kosar. Once again, this is a long pass. He throws it from the right hash mark over to the sideline. They say he's got a strong arm. He combines the strength and touch on this one. That's an excellently run route and a, a nice timing pattern. Michigan taking advantage of the Miami turnover. They've got a first and ten just outside the Hurricane 10 yard line. And off the left side goes Gerald White. And he barrels forward to nearly the five yard line. Harriman threw the big block on that one coming through the line as the fullback. And White that time was hit, fell forward for that extra two yards. That's a nice five, four or five yard gain on first down. That, that three man front is the heart and soul of the, of the Miami defense. Uh, Michigan completed a couple key passes, but right now it looks like they're beating them up at the line of scrimmage just a bit. Miami defense has to dig in here right now as Michigan down at the Hurricane six yard line. And very long. Straight up the middle, he's got a touchdown. Bob 
Perryman in the lineup with Eddie Garrett out with a knee injury. Nice play to break in. Goes six yards off the left tackle for the touchdown to make it by a, a score of six to nothing. Well, it looks to be a, an opening scoring drive for Miami. Turns around in a hurry. With 10.27 remaining in the first quarter, here's Bob Bergeron, who was a walk-on in 1983 to try the extra point. And it is so good. Bergeron is wide to the far side on the extra point. So the Hurricanes get a bit of a break right here. It is six to nothing on this touchdown run coming up by Bob Perryman. Well, credit for Lourdes, the center, James and Pappuccino. Quick trap up the middle. Uh, Perriman doesn't have the great breakaway speed, but he's quick. It flows off the ball. That's perfect blocking. He, he doesn't get touched, so he hits the goal line. Touchdown for the Michigan Wolverines. 27 remaining in the first quarter. This is the Cat Sports Network. We're back here at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Hurricanes were on the move. They had driven down to the 46 of Michigan. Darrell Oliver fumbled the ball away. Recovered by the Wolverines, 54 yards. They moved downfield. An impressive drive by Jim Harbaugh. And here is the kickoff by Sloppy. It sails into the end zone. Kinsai lets it out. And it'll be a touchback, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. A first and 10 coming up for the Miami Hurricanes. Nine plays, 54 yards. The Wolverines held onto the ball for three minutes and 36 seconds. Perryman going the final six. And Harbaugh, a perfect three for three for 33 yards in the drive. And they looked as effective offensively and diverse as Miami did uh, going down the field. Uh, White, four carries for 20 yards. Perryman, two for 11. Uh, excellent, excellent drive uh, by the Wolverines. So here come the Hurricanes out of the huddle right now. Ty Smith and Oliver are the running backs as they work out of the I formation. This is Darrell Oliver. Oliver gets six yards up to the 26-yard line. And it'll be a second and four. Kevin Brooks, the right tackle, coming up to make the stop. The senior from Detroit. Well, that Michigan front, uh, and we'll get a chance to look at them a little bit closer uh, as the game progresses. They're a, a, a very smallish, uh, but a quick unit. Uh, they play a slant planting angling defense the linebackers read and pursue uh, and that's the strength of their defense second down and four for the hurricane this is oliver again he's going to be close but shy of the first down as he's taken down at the 29 by all-american mike mallory so a third and one coming up for Miami. That was a problem last week. Third down conversion for the Hurricanes. In every manner, uh, shape, and form. And primarily third and short, which uh, you wouldn't uh, assume so. Uh, and it wasn't a, a problem running or passing. It was a problem uh, with both. They just uh, haven't done it as well as they'd like. So a third down coming up for Miami. Ty Smith and Oliver remain the running back. The Canes have double tight ends in the lineup as Bernie Kosar brings them to the line of scrimmage. Uh -oh. First down and more, he may go. Gant will get him and take him down at the 45-yard line. Tony Gant, the free safety, a junior from Fremont, Ohio, saves a touchdown as Alonzo Highsmith very nearly breaks one. There you see both linebackers plugging holes on the left-hand side. When he That's an excellent block right there on the, the outside uh, corner man. Gant, fortunately, once again, with the great pers pursuit, uh, is able to run him down. 26 yards on the play for Highsmith, and a first down for the Hurricanes at the Wolverine 45-yard line. Close to Oliver. Oliver is mighty close to get another first down for the Hurricanes. As Tony Gant finally brings him down, a gain of nearly 10 yards on the play. And Darrell Oliver making up for that early fumble, which upset up the Michigan touchdown. Once again, just excellent offensive line play. Sinclair, uh, Ward, Moore. And anytime you get good line blocking, you're going to get a three or four yard gain. That time Highsmith down there through the block, and, uh, enabling him to gain another five yards. Second down, less than a yard inside the 36 yard line for the Miami Hurricanes. They are trailing in the ball game by a score of six to nothing. Moving on the line. Al Trimcic looked like the man who 
popped over the middle guard, three-year starter from Cleveland, Ohio. And the procedure call goes again. Go over it. Miami came out throwing the ball and talking to the uh, Michigan defensive coaches. They would prefer Miami to throw the ball. They think it's very, very uh, frustrating for a defense when the offense is able to just run the ball down the field. That's what's happening right now. They haven't had to put it in the air. It could tire a defense up. And you better believe it. On first down now. Bernie Kosar bringing this team to the line of scrimmage. Kosar, three for three thus far in this ballgame. High Smith and Oliver remain the running back. High Smith number 37. Oliver nearest to you on your screen. He's audible wing right now. Over the middle, intended for High Smith, instead it is intercepted by Al Bishop, by Jeff Mallory. And Mallory returns it up to the 23 yard line. Second turnover of the ball game. The Michigan Wolverines have a shot on Judge Mallory's interception. One of the keys in this ball game. The defensive backfield knew that they would get their hands on a couple of balls. Uh, it's one thing to knock a pass down. There's another thing when you get the ball in your hands to intercept it. This time he was rushed, and I think it's one of the few times we've seen him make a bad decision. He was open uh, about five yards earlier around the 10-yard line. Waited just a little bit too long, threw it up for grabs, and uh, the interception. Doug Mallory, the younger brother, he's a sophomore of All-American Mike Mallory. And he comes up with a big interception right here. So turn two turnovers for the Hurricanes. And we're midway through this first quarter. Michigan has the football back on its own 22-yard line. And the handoff to Gerald White. And White's got a first down up over the 35 to the 36. Darrell Fullington into the stop with a pickup of 14 yards for the Michigan Wolverines. Let's take a little bit closer look at the line play. Once again, just a great, great uh, hole. There you see the blocking on the right-hand side. And you got uh, uh, Hammerstein pulling from the left side. Tim Nelson makes a good block. That's a big, big game on first down. 14-yard pickup for the Michigan Wolverines. They've got a first down at their own 36, leading by a score of 6 to nothing. This is Gerald White again on the quick pick. White breaks the tackle, gets up to the 40, Julio Cortez, number 99, leading the charge for the Miami Hurricanes. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six coming up for this year. Well, that time Fleming came in, came in from the uh, his inside linebacking position, got his hands around White, but really it was a little bit off balance, and while it was a broken tackle, he really wasn't in a position to make a good hit. Jim Harbaugh in his first start ever for the University of Michigan. As we look at the backfield, Perryman is the up back. The tailback is Gerald White on second down and six. This is White. Here's Hall. Closes up rather quickly. Willie Lee Roach. The man in on the stop for the Hurricanes. It'll be third and short coming up. Third down and two. The ball at the 39. White with six carries, 38 yards prior to that one. Uh, Looked like the play was designed to go off left, uh, off the left guard spot. Saw it was close, made a great cut, got people out of position, and uh, picked up a couple more. At the 44-yard line, it is. It is now third down and two for the Michigan Wolverines. Harry Nick, he's got the first down up to the 47-yard line. Bruce Fleming. In on the stop, but Bob Perryman, who has scored the touchdown for Michigan in a six-yard run, picked up another first down for the Wolverines with 555 remaining in the first quarter. Boy, and Miami's moved the ball well every time they've had it, but uh, uh, when you look at time of possession and keeping that Miami offense on the sidelines, uh, Michigan, that's where Michigan's winning this ball game. Perryman at 72 yards last year. He's got two for 11 in this ball game, and the Wolverines have a first down. Play action. In trouble is Harbaugh. Harbaugh will be sacked back at the 38-yard line. Willie Lee Broughton is the man who forced him inside. And then number 93, John McVay, came in to come up with the sack back at the 39. Well, this time I thought there were a couple of receivers that were open. Uh, Harbaugh looks uh, one way only this time to the left sideline. And now he just runs for his life. Uh, decent protection, but uh, good coverage in the secondary. A loss of nine. Back to the 39. It's second and 19 coming up for the Wolverines. At the top of your screen is Vince Dean in a passing situation. Instead, the draw play, Gerald White. 
Now White breaks a couple of tackles, gets back to midfield. Kevin Fagan comes in on the stop for a gain of 11 yards on the play. They'll spot it at the 49, a gain of 10. It'll be a third and nine. Now, this has been a, a typical of the Michigan offense over the years. Of course, Rick Rogers, as we mentioned, 1,002 yards last year, not playing. But they seem to have so much talent at that position. They're able to run people in and out the entire game. When one goes down or goes out, somebody else is ready to pick right up where he left off. Michigan back to the line of scrimmage on a third down. Here's Harbaugh. He's a perfect three for three from the air. He's now three for four. Vince Dean unable to come up with it. Defended by Bruce Fleming, number 58, the junior linebacker from Monica, Pennsylvania. And for the first time this afternoon, the Michigan Wolverines will have to kick the ball away with 4-17 remaining in this first quarter. And Michigan leading it by a score of 6-0. Uh, certainly the, the drive has stalled, but uh, in Michigan's favor right now, the field position. They were able to make a couple first downs. Once again, the Miami offense will start uh, in their own territory. Monty Robbins will kick the ball away. And it will sail into the end zone for a touchback. And from the line of scrimmage, 51 yards for Monty Robbins. So with 4-10 remaining in the first quarter, Michigan leads it by a score of 6 to nothing. A time on the field will be right back. Ross and Steve Grody back here at Michigan Stadium. The Hurricanes are trailing the Wolverines by a score of six to nothing. Miami's third possession. They fumbled once. Kosar's been intercepted once. The Canes will start it up one more time. Warren Williams in the lineup for the first time at a running back position, number 24. The handoff goes to high set, breaks the tackle. They'll get some yardage up to the 27 yard line. Mike Hammerstein very nearly had him in the backfield for a loss. Garland Rivers comes up to make the stop, and it's a gain of about seven yards. Well, Oliver Hi Alonzo Highsmith uh, a little bit racked up, and he's going to be helped off the field. There you see the scoreboard, three minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Smith, who last year had only 74 yards as a freshman, but turned in that 100-yard-plus performance against the Auburn in helping the Hurricanes to a victory, and he seems to make it off the field under his own power. Freshman, they put him through a lot of different tests, found out that he was a better running back than the running back they had recruited. Said uh, last week uh, before the Florida game, he said, I hate the Gators, I hate them even more because they wanted to recruit me as a defensive back. Second down and three. And here is Williams. He's got the first down up to the 30-yard line. Warren Williams, a freshman from Fort Myers. Mike Mallory comes in on the stop, but it's the first down for the Hurricanes. At that time, I thought that uh, if he'd have made a cut left, he had a big hole, ran into his own man. Let's take a look at it. Right up the middle. Good straightaway blocking. Boom. Yep. Bounces right off the center, Ian Sinclair, who is coming back, number 76, but it's a first down for the Miami Hurricanes, who are trailing in the ball game by a score of six to nothing. Here's High Smith, and High Smith gets maybe a yard on the play. Mike Hammerstein, number 66, and Mike Mallory, number 42, combining on the stop. So Bernie Kosar, now three for four in the ball game on the ground. Highsmith now with three carries for 33 yards, and it's a second down and nine coming up for the game. The offensive line's concerned about blocking that small, quick defensive front for Michigan. Uh, they've had their way pretty much. Uh, first time... Uh, uh, on a running play where the Michigan uh, defense was able to stop them pretty uh, significantly. Second down and nine for Miami. Kosar calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. And he gets it up to the 35-yard line. Jim Scarcelli, number 85. 
brings him down, and he's the man who chased Bernie Kosar in the backfield. For the first time in three ball games, we have seen Kosar have difficulty in finding receivers downfield. Three-man pattern that time, and uh, uh, the defensive coverage was just tremendous. Uh, absolutely nowhere to throw that ball. Kosar had to take off out of the pocket. Kevin Brooks of the Michigan Wolverines is the man down on the field. One of the preseason All-Americans. A penalty flag has been dropped. And it could be a face mask call against the Michigan Wolverines. But the big story here is Kevin Brooks. Penalty does go against Michigan. Boy, he, he went down and has not moved. And uh, you hope that it's not a head or a neck injury. being looked at two minutes 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter six to nothing Michigan Hurricanes thought they were going to get some cool weather here in uh, Michigan yesterday temperature was in the 60s and even last night late at night there was no telling it was going to be an 85 degree day but it is beautiful nary a cloud in the sky Hurricanes trailing six to nothing this is the Cat Sports Network The good news for the Michigan Wolverines, you see Kevin Brooks on the bench. He did get up and walk off the field under his own power. Third and one for Miami. The Hurricanes have themselves a first down as Alonzo Highsmith hits through to about the 44-yard line. Brad Cochran and Mike Mallory combining on the stop. Dave Meredith, a senior from Sterling Heights, Michigan, who started four games last year, replaces Kevin Brooks, who you see being administered to at the Michigan bench. First down for Miami from their own 44. First time they had the ball, moved from their own 20 down to the Wolverine 46, Oliver fumbled. Second time from their own 20 down to the Michigan 30, Kosar was intercepted. On first down, this is William. He barrels ahead into Michigan territory down to the 47-yard line, Mike Mallory comes up to make the stop and the game's getting some good room right in the middle of that Michigan line. Well, and I'm continually impressed with not only the blocking at the point of attack, but the ability of the offensive lineman to get down and block on those linebackers. I mean, you're not talking about you know, four and five yard gains. You're talking about seven and eight yard burst uh, right up the middle. That takes uh, four or five uh, perfect blocks. Second down and one now for Miami. For a third time, they are in Michigan territory. Smith has the first down after being hit and tripped up at the line of scrimmage by number 66, Mike Hammerstein. But Alonzo Highsmith, but he left the ball game earlier. He was kicked in the shin and came back two plays later. Now, what a find he has been for the University of Miami Ball Club. You know, originally when he came in as a freshman, they thought that uh, had thoughts of moving moving him to linebacker. Thought he'd be a great one, but. Uh, anytime you've got a great player, they're obviously more valuable in a running back position than they would be on defense. Don't tell that to a defender, though, <laughs> Brody. <laughs> on first down, Kosar will go to the air. Kosar incomplete. It went off the fingertips of Chris Hembro, who was in the lineup for Willie Smith. And Smith a little bit shook up following the Florida game. 15 receptions in two games. And Hembro, who was a junior from Springfield, Illinois, who last year backed up Glenn Dennison, the All-American. And this year, backing up Willie Smith. Well, you can see it's a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one situation with the linebacker. Ball thrown just a little bit behind, but nonetheless, catchable. Uh, maybe a little bit too hard, but anytime you hit a guy right in the hands, you gotta, you gotta feel like that you've done your job. Second down and 10 from the Michigan 44-yard line. Wolverines lead 6-0. First down, Hurricanes, and then some down to the 28-yard line. Garland Rivers comes in on the stop, but Alonzo Highsmith picks up 16 big yards, and the Hurricanes have a first and 10. Well, that time, it was Ian Sinclair, the center, blocking on Kevin Brooks, made the big one that sprung him. And I'll tell you what, we, we've got a, a, a bunch of running backs that are hard to bring down. You better put a big-time hit on them. You're not going to pull them down just with your arm. Highsmith now unofficially seven carries for 64 yards, and we have not completed the first quarter. This could be the final play. 17 seconds remaining. Williams hit right at the line of scrimmage. Joe Gray, the middle guard. 
comes in on the stop. No gain on the play, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. So the Hurricanes have moved the ball well, but turnovers have hurt them in the first quarter. And after one, it is Michigan 6, University of Miami nothing. This is the Cat Sports Network. Side of the field intended for Warren Williams out of the backfield. So the Hurricanes are now faced with a third down and 11 at the Michigan 29 yard line. There you see the totals in the first quarter. Hurricanes with the edge, but they are trailing in the ball game by a score of six to nothing. Third down coming up and 11 for the University of Miami. Looking for Shakespeare. He's going to be hit. He fumbles the ball away. He had Shakespeare on the far side of the field and took a hit from Tim Anderson. The left side linebacker and the ball is recovered by the Michigan Wolverines. Third turnover of the ball game for Miami. It really has not been an outstanding performance by the defense. They have yet to force them to give up the ball via the punt, but they've come up with the three big turnovers. And, and while they haven't never been known for a good pass rush, this time they come in on the blitz, but it's really been the defensive secondary that has really caused the problem. They've covered the receivers well on most occasions. And that time, once again, uh, with the fumble, the Michigan people right there ready to recover. And the fumble recovered by Dave Meredith, number 96, who was in the lineup for Kevin Brooks, who suffered that injury. There's an injured Miami player on the field, Alvin Ward, the senior right guard, number 72, from Chicago, Illinois. Star came out very hot, drove the team down the field with three out of three completions before they, they gave up the ball on the fumble. Uh, has yet to complete a pass since then. And uh, once again, uh, uh, it's been that defensive secondary that has made it very tough on him. Well, Alvin Ward up in his seat, and he leaves the field under his own power. But the Hurricanes, two fumbles, one interception, all coming after they move from their own 20 the first time down to the Michigan 46. The second time from their 20 down to the Michigan 30. The third time from their own 20 down to the Michigan 29. Wolverines have the ball back. They lead 6-0. Just underway here in the second quarter of play. And here is Gerald White. Ooh. He and he moves it up to the 38-yard line. Hit indeed by Kent Calhoun, the senior strong safety from Titusville, Florida. talk about the Miami offense don't forget that defense uh, is a pretty decent uh, uh, group themselves and for two good defensive teams we've seen a lot of offense and a lot of yards piled up here in the first quarter on second down now by Perryman who scored the game's only touchdown moves it over the 40 to about the 41 big Julio Cortez and Willie Lee Broton coming in the stop to a third down facing Michigan they've got it on the 43 they've got a third and one coming up for three and they've got one coming up here this is Perryman looks like he got it first down up near the 45 yard line so a first down for Michigan John McVay comes in on the stop and the Wolverines moving the football on the ground now that Miami offense is really putting their defense uh, to the test I know every defense prides themselves in sudden change ability after a turnover to come in and have that have the emotion to stop the uh, the opponent they did it once uh, they've got it they failed once they've got it back for the third time on a turnover the Michigan offense does from their own 44 leading six to nothing Gerald White oh and he is it and clobbered as Willie Lee broke and diagnosed that play perfectly and took White down way back behind the line of scrimmage. Willie Lee, a first-year starter, a senior from Fort Pierce. Well, Broughton is really coming into his own now. He beat Cappuccino on that play. He's a, he's a very quick, explosive guy. He's become much more consistent. I guess it's a, his ability now to play with a little bit of pain and some nagging injuries, which is, has been the big thing he's overcome. Just 20 years old and a senior. So that is, extremely uh, young. That's a disadvantage yeah. to be a 20-year-old senior in college football as some freshman are 20 years of age. 
Here it is now on a second and 16 in the backfield. Jamie Morris, the freshman, is taken down behind the line of scrimmage by John McVay and Willie Lee Broughton. So the Miami defense holding here in a third and 13 coming up for the Wolverines. Morris ended up running into his own offensive lineman that time, but uh, uh, credit that defensive front of the, uh, the Hurricanes. There was basically nowhere to run. He had to try to just pick out a hole. Third down, 13 now. Miami trailing, six to nothing. Causing problems of their own. Three turnovers, two fumbles. Bernie Kosar intercepted one. This is Harbaugh. Harbaugh has room. Got to get down to the Miami 45. He's going to be close, but perhaps a little bit shy. Winston Moss comes up to make the stop along with Julio Cortez, depending on where they mark the ball. And the mark will not be in favor of Michigan. It'll be a fourth down and less than a yard. I thought this time, I think you'll see Tim Nelson, the tight end, right here. If he'd have stopped and made a block right here, it has sprung Harbaugh down the sideline. Without that block, he had to cut back inside to the pursuit. He's going to come up a yard short. John McVay came up to make the stop. And it is fourth down coming up for Michigan. And that they do not look like they're going to punt the ball away. And they're going to go for it. I was about to say the Miami defense for the second time after a turnover has hold and forced a punt. Gerald White remains the tailback. And here is White looking for the first down. I do not believe he made it. It is going to be close. As he was taken down, the Miami defense piled in. Number 27, Greg Jones. And let's see where they mark that ball. The Wolverines have to get down to the 41, right on the line. They're going to bring the chains out. I always like to speculate, Steve. <laughs> I think they're shy by maybe uh, maybe six inches. I think you're I, I think you're right. They're, they haven't made it. It doesn't look to me like they've hit that hash mark. Well, three inches, whatever. It is not a first down. Miami has taken over. The gamble does not work for the Wolverines of Michigan with 11-19 remaining in the first quarter. And on the sidelines, you see Gerald White talking to Bo Schembechler. Hurricanes get the ball back. Good field position. Their own 46. Their first three series, they started from the 20. And they've stopped themselves on all three That's occasions. Right. Uh, it really has not been an outstanding day for the Michigan defense. They've come up with the turnovers, uh, but this is not a typical performance from them. First time, West started from the 20, down to the Michigan 46, Oliver fumbles. Michigan gets the ball, 54 yards, nine plays. They come up with a touchdown, Bob Berryman. Second time, Miami moves from its own 20, down to the Wolverine 30. Mallory intercepts Kozar. Third down, down to the Michigan 29. Kozar fumbles the ball away. It's first and 10 for Miami from their 46. On the draw. In the backfield, Darrell Oliver takes it down. Kevin Brooks came up and made a beautiful stop. So Brooks back in the lineup after being shook up on Miami's last possession. Drops Oliver for a loss back to the 44-yard line. And with a great passing attack, that's what you've always got to be scared of uh, as, a, as a Michigan defensive coach. Uh, your defensive line... Uh, with them wanting to get in and rush the pass uh, so much throughout the day, you got to believe a draw play is going to break sometime during the afternoon. Second down and 12. Bernie Kosar. And that one is complete. Stanley Shakespeare, though, they really was out of bounds. Stanley Shakespeare right on the sideline, taking the hit from Brad Cochran and out of bounds pass. So Kosar, who started the day three for three, now 0 for 4. So he's 3 for 7 and one of those four an interception. Well that was the first time he really, it looked to me like he sat back there with confidence and threw the right pass just got knocked out of bounds. We don't have a real good vantage point. It's on the other side. A little bit of an argument on the sideline as to whether or not he was in uh, but the official ruled out. That's what it'll be. Third down and 12 for the Hurricanes. 1 for 2 on third down conversions thus far in the ball game. Quick over the middle, incomplete. Alfredo Roberts had the ball and dropped it as he took a hard hit from Doug Mallory, who earlier intercepted Coach Yard. But even with the reception, it would have been shy of the first down and listen to this crowd. 
It was really a good play on both sides of the field. Michigan went with the blitz. Kosar picked it up. The line picked it up. He dumped it off real quick to the tight end, which he should have done. And this was just a great, great defensive play. So it will be fourth down coming up. We saw the inside linebackers split. Once again, dumped it off very quickly right over the middle. That's just a great defensive play. Steve Miney will kick it away for the University of Miami. Tony Gant back in single safety calls the fair catch and he hauls it in on the 20 yard line. So that's where Michigan will put it into play. First and 10 from their own 20 as they lead the University of Miami by a score of six to nothing. We have 10 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Six nothing Michigan. This is the Cat Sports Network. This crowd of 104,000 likes what they've seen so far. Their Michigan Wolverines are leading the University of Miami Hurricanes by a score of six to nothing. We have 10.26 remaining in the first half. Michigan has the ball back following a Miami punt. Jim Harbaugh, junior quarterback, his first start. And he hits Dean up near the 30-yard line. It'll be close to a first down. Bruce Fleming. And in the stop, Vince Dean, the senior from Southfield, Michigan, with a reception, first down for the Wolverines at the 31. Coming in, into the ball game, the offensive game plan to throw the ball uh, one out of every three down to one out of, out of every four down. Uh, five, uh, they've, been, they've thrown it five times in their 20 offensive plays, and Harbaugh has done a good job. Four for five for junior Jim Harbaugh. This time, the handoff goes to Bob Perryman, the fullback. Ken Calhoun comes in on the stop, and again up to the 34. It'll be second down and seven. Cameron, number 64, made a good play that time to the left tackle. Uh, stood up the offensive uh, lineman right at the position. Really no place to go for the offensive player. Second down, coming up for Michigan. They lead 6-0. They had a 56-yard drive, nine plays. That was following the turnover. Darrell Oliver bumping it away at the Michigan 46-yard line. Harbaugh looking to throw a six pass to the ball game, and he completes it up to the 40-yard line. Got rid of that ball of Gerald White, and White with a good reception in a crowd. Winston Moss comes in on the stop. And for a young player, he really makes a, a good play here. It was a broken pattern after Harbaugh had to, had to scramble. Excellent coverage initially on the scramble. Uh, White just runs a different route. That's a good, that's a good throw running from to your left, thrown back right between two defenders. Perhaps the toughest thing for a right-handed quarterback to do. Moving to the left and throwing to the right. Third down and one. Now coming up for Michigan. White the tailback. Perryman gets the call. Perryman is hit. He may have staggered forward enough for the first down. It's going to be close. On the fourth and one last time, they went with White, the smaller 6'1", 200-pound back. That time they go with the fullback. They're not even going to measure. Perryman has the first down for the University of Michigan. And a little slow in getting up off the turf, Clay Miller. But there is Perryman, who has scored the game's only touchdown. And he now picks up the first down for the Wolverines with 8 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the half. And Clay Miller is down on the field. There's Perryman. Miller, a senior from Norman, Oklahoma. And as you can see in the center of your screen, he is being helped off the field. It's the first down for Michigan. So Miller is only one of uh, two interior linemen who are back starting this year for the University of Michigan. So both had to change things around a lot. And the lone starter at the same position. Of course, James uh, started at left tackle, the, the quick tackle last, last year. He's down quick guard. Now he's, and Miller's the glue up front. Um, they'll miss him. John Elliott, a sophomore from Lake Ronkonkoma, New York, is in the lineup to take his place. First and 10 for Michigan. White. And a white. Moves forward, spinning and chugging up over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Bruce Fleming finally comes in to make the stop, but a pickup of six yards on the play. And some good news for Michigan. Clay Miller has come back into the lineup, number 79. Both team leading it by a score of six to nothing. A lot of offense and no points. They've run both teams have put, run the ball up and down the uh, field and thrown the ball up and down the field. We've only got six points on the scoreboard. Turnovers hurting Miami, two fumbles and an interception. So 
looks like a broken play. The pitch out to White. And he finally stops uh, with perhaps a gain of a yard on the play. That's the first time Darrell Fullington in the stop. First time we've seen him run the option, which has been the traditional Michigan offense. And we have not seen tradition today. And, you know, the first time they run it, 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 it almost uh, is disastrous because they ran into the fullback on the initial fake uh, into the line. That's generally where the fumble will occur when those two guys collide. Uh, Hartball recovered and makes a good pitch. It was just uh, uh, by that time, the timing had broken down and it was a good defensive play. Third down and four now for Michigan. Their own 47. Harbaugh. He just threw that ball poorly. It looked like he didn't have a good grip on it as he let go and uh, it just do dove down toward the ground. It goes incomplete. So. Michigan will have to kick it away, but uh, young Jim Harbaugh has been impressive indeed. Four for seven for 43 yards. And Monty Robbins will come out to kick the ball away. Back deep will be Brett Perriman, number 33, for the University of Miami to receive the kick. Well, Robbins did his job the first time with that 51-yard boomer. And he hangs this one. Perryman calls a fair catch at the 15-yard line. And that's where Miami will put it in the play. It'll be marked down at the 16. 6 nothing Michigan. 7.05 remaining in the first half. Good punt. And it was into a pretty strong win. And uh, the field position factor, which is, is always an important one uh, in determining the winner of a ball game, uh, Michigan has done a good job of it. Uh, I, I believe twice from the 20-yard line, and now uh, from about the 15, uh, Miami will start. Now, Miami is not at good field position. The 20 the first time, the 20 the second time, the 20 the third time. And right here, they put it into play first and 10 from their own 16-yard line. Hurricanes trailing in the ball game by a score of 6 to nothing. Might look for them to come out passing the ball. That's what they were most effective doing on their initial possession of the game. Well, this well. time, this is <laughs> Williams going straight up the middle, up over the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Brad Cochran and Tony Gant come in on the stop. Perhaps the Wolverines were looking for the best, Steve Rody. Evidently they were, weren't they? <laughs> they may call the chains out on this one. It's close to a first down. Warren Williams, just a freshman from Fort Myers, penciled in as the starter at the running back position. And uh, we've seen a lot more of Darrell Oliver thus far in the season. Well, there's been 100 total yards rushing now by the Miami offense, and this has been a very, very strong performance by that offensive line. They're not big and physical, physical but they're a veteran group, and uh, they're close-knit, very smart units, and they've had an outstanding day. And it is a first down for the Hurricanes. Shakespeare going wide to the top of your screen. Eddie Brown at the bottom. On a first and ten from their own 26-yard line. Miami trailing six to nothing. Bernie Kosar on play action in trouble. Over the middle, Eddie Brown leaping grab at the 45. First down game. Tony Gant. A late the hit. Top. A late hit. It'll tack up some more yardage and move the Hurricanes into Wolverine territory. Boy, just an excellent pattern. Nice throw. Good patience that time by Kosar. Uh, and that's an excellent catch. That ball up in the air. Mallory came in with the late hit and actually ended up getting hurt himself. Well, Doug Mallory, who intercepted Kosar earlier, forced the fumble a little bit later. Now racked up a little bit, but it's a first down for the University of Miami Hurricanes. The penalty tacked on. The Canes will be down at the Wolverine 39. Every football team's biggest concern in their first game, of course, is mistakes. Uh, and I thought, for the most part, Michigan has played a mistake-free first half. First time a penalty has hurt them, and, and it's a big one. Miami once again into Michigan territory. Mallory still on the field, being administered to, with six minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the first half. The Miami Hurricanes are trailing in the ball game by a score of six to nothing. Doug Mallory, a sophomore, the brother of All-American Mike, will take a break here from Michigan Stadium, 6-0 in favor of the Wolverines, and we'll be right back. First and 10 for Miami, down at the Wolverines 39-yard line. Michigan leading in the ball game, 6-0. Second quarter, 6-0-7 remaining. Audible. Flag 
back is dropped. Kosar over the middle gets the tight end, Chris Hembro. And Hembro taken down at the 22. But hold on, we get a flag dropped in the play. Garland Rivers in a stop stand, they'll call it back. A penalty against the University of Miami. So that time Michigan faked the blitz with both linebackers. Kosar still made the right call and found his people, but uh, that flag was thrown in a hurry. It looked like it came from the right side of the offensive line. Chris Embro in the lineup replacing Willie Smith, an ankle injury. He could play today, but we haven't seen him yet. And the ball put back to the 44. So five yards against Miami. It'll be first down and 15 coming up for the Hurricanes. They are trailing 6-0. We have 5.55 remaining in the first half. When you look at the stats, it's only going to be one penalty for five yards, but you don't see the play that it negated, and that was a big gainer. Not how many you get, when you get them. And this one hurts the Hurricane. Kosar to the air one more time. Throws the screen near side. Alonzo Highsmith. Highsmith gets down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Brad Cochran, number 30, leading the charge to bring him down. And a gain of five yards on the play. It'll make it second and ten. And maybe not the biggest of, of, of gains, but uh, this high Smith is elusive in the open field. Well-conceived pattern. The, the tight end was wide open right down in the middle of the field and was holding the linebackers in. Now watch this. He gets over here, and then he just steps by two or three people and then just dives for yardage. Dieter Heron, you saw him, number 35. He's in replacing Doug Mallory, who was shook up a couple of plays ago. Second and 10 for the game. Bernie's in trouble. And Kevin Brooks has the sack back at the midfield strike for a loss of 11 yards on the play. It'll make it third and 21 for Miami. Well, Gary Moeller told me that they expect every single defensive lineman in the ballgame today to get a sack. This time, Brooks angles right. Let's see where he, where he comes in now. Oh, he comes up right up the middle. I had the wrong guy. But once again, you've got five guys this time uh, on the rush. That presents more one-on-one -on -one blocking. Brooks that time was able to, uh, to beat his man. Well, Brooks got the right guy. He was going after number 20, Bernie Kosar, in the Hurricanes now with an unenviable third down and 21 back at midfield. Kosar getting good protection. The tight end incomplete, and the ball is intercepted. Intercepted by Rodney Lyles of the University of Michigan. Chris Hembro couldn't hold it. Kosar has been intercepted a second time, and Michigan has thwarted the Hurricanes one more time. And there's a penalty on the flag. Now, one of the Miami offensive players, that's uh, Alvin Ward, a little upset, went after one of the Michigan people. Now, if Michigan didn't retaliate, that's going to be a 15-yard penalty on Miami. This is where discipline comes in. So often you'll see the offsetting uh, misconduct penalties. Uh, see, you retaliate, and uh, you lose your 15 yards. The interception coming off a deflection. Alfredo Roberts, the intended receiver, and look at this juggling act. Well, and it would still seem like the Michigan defensive secondary is doing a pretty decent job. It looks like uh, Kosar has to stand back there and look a little bit longer for his receivers than usual. That was still a decently thrown ball. You know, I, I, you hate to repeat yourself, but uh, the pursuing defense, once again, the loose ball and three or four Michigan people there to, to grab it. Tony Gantz deflected it up in the air. Lyles came up with the interception, and this is Gerald White. Moving ahead for four or five yards, up to the 36. Three minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Miami has fumbled the ball away twice and has been intercepted on two occasions. And all the turnovers coming after the Canes have moved into Wolverine territory. They have had very little trouble moving the ball. They've just given it up on, on the turnovers. An interception that will look like a, a bad one, but again, as you mentioned, Steve, it's not a badly thrown football. It really wasn't. Second down and seven. Broken play. Uh oh. Oh, that's a great play right there. Made a broken play into a four yard game. Greg Jones in on the stop up to the 40. It'll be third and three. And running up for the Wolverines. You pointed out at the top of the telecast how difficult it is for a Michigan quarterback. When he gets up to the line of scrimmage, he's called a play. But after checking the defense, 
he then calls the audible as to which side the play is going to be run. They call a check with me. He'll say uh, off tackle, off tackle, check with me. Gets up to the line of scrimmage and then he'll call, uh, he'll audible either to run the play left or right. On passing situations, they'll call two pass plays. He'll audible which play, play to, to use. So to, to run the option and to do all those things in a hundred uh, before 105 people in your thousand people in your first game is <laughs> is a pretty gutsy challenge to accept. A lot of pressure, and this time Harbaugh on third down overthrows Vince Zee, and it'll bring up a fourth down, and the Wolverines unable to take advantage of yet another Miami turnover with 314 remaining in the half. There's some obvious miscommunication right there on the pattern. They only needed three or four yards. Uh, Fiend was in perfect position to just catch that ball and, and would have had his first down. Uh, Harbaugh thought he was going to run the pattern another five yards deeper. Monty Robbins back to punt it away. His first one was for 51. Perryman back deep and Robbins gets good foot into this football. 14-yard line, Perryman. Taken down at the 23, and that's where the Hurricanes will put it into play. Once again, for field position for the University of Miami. They've had to put it into play for the 20 on three occasions. And right here for the 23, Michigan leading in the ballgame by a score of 6 to nothing. This is the Cat Sports Network. First down, once again, Bernie Kosar is rushed, and his pass intended for Chris Hembro, number 88, the tight end, goes incomplete. So we'll get a second down coming up. The Hurricanes shut out now for nearly 28 minutes. Last time they were shut out in the first half, back last November the 5th against East Carolina. They trailed 7-0 at halftime, went on to win the ball game by a score of 12-7 with a fourth quarter touchdown. Second and 10 now for the University of Miami. Split. Kosar's in trouble. Kosar taken down at the 16-yard line. The blitz work. Kevin Brooks came flying in. Fourth. Kosar out of the pocket. And Bernie taken down at the 16-yard line. A loss of seven. It'll be third and 17. And you know, people will say that uh, Kosar doesn't have the greatest feet in the world, that he's not a scrambler. But uh, what you will notice is that he has the quick feet in a confined area to avoid the first wave of rush. Uh, you can see, you'll see him dodge that first defensive uh, oncoming uh, rusher and complete a pass. That time, uh, the, the rush was just too severe. Uh, two and three people right behind the first wave. Remember back in the Auburn game, he evaded a blitzing linebacker through for a touchdown. It's third and 15. Kosar over the middle, deflected off the fingertips of Chris Hembro once again. Hurricanes will have to kick it away with 2.09 remaining. In the first half of play, this Michigan team is playing well, and this crowd loves it. I don't know about you, but it just appears to me that the defensive pass rush and the defensive secondary have got uh, Kosar uh, a little uneasy back there. Uh, that time, that, that tight end was wide open in, in the overthrowing, and it was a pretty easy pass right down the middle. A lot of pressure, though, coming up on Bernie Kosar. And right now, Rick Tutin will kick the ball away. <laughs> and he got it off. Tony Gant back at his own 35. He's at the 40. He breaks the tackle, 45, and he gets all the way to midfield. Tony Gant. Darren McMurray in on the stop. It'll be first and ten coming up for Michigan. Good field position, plenty of time for them. A minute 58 remaining in the first half. And I'm a strong believer that the team that goes in on the upbeat uh, at halftime has got the big advantage coming out of the locker room. And, boy, it would be real important for that Miami defense to, to hold them scoreless now. 6-0 in favor of Michigan. Darrell Oliver fumbled on Miami's first possession down at the Wolverine 46-yard line. Nine plays later, Bob Perryman took it over from six yards away for the game's only touchdown. Harbaugh, play action. Harbaugh in trouble. Harbaugh's going to be sacked. Winston Moss, number 92, the man who got to him. Julio Cortez also there bothering Harbaugh. And it'll be a second down coming up. A loss of only a yard in the play. It'll be second down and 11. I'll tell you what, when these defensive linemen get a chance to get their hands on the quarterback, <laughs> look out. This time the rush is pretty decent. Good de defensive coverage in the secondary. And 
when that quarterback takes off, you can find most, that's when most linemen run their fastest, when they're chasing the quarterback. They can, they can taste it. They can smell it. On second down, the draw play. Jamie Moss out of the backfield. He just staggers, stumbles, moves forward into Hurricane territory. Ken Calhoun comes in on the stop, but a good gainer on the draw play. Wolverines are going to call their first of three timeouts here as they are down in Miami territory, down at the 43-yard line. They get a good field goal kicker in Bob Bergeron, who was a walk-on last year and wound up setting a school record hitting 15 of 17 field goals. He replaced a pretty good one, a fellow named Ali Haji Sheik, who went on to become, as a rookie, perhaps the best place kicker in the National Football League. Uh, it's funny, for uh, Ali Haji Sheik, of course, you know, is from Texas. <laughs> I always laugh at people that, that, that ask about him. They think he's from overseas. And he's got talks with the Texas Plank. His dad teaches him at the University of Michigan. Game down to the Hurricane 45. It'll be a third down and three, a long three, coming up for Michigan. A third down conversion in this first half. Michigan now four of eight. Harbaugh in the air, five of seven for 49 yards. Bernie Kosar is five for 12 for 53. He hit his first three passes. So since then, he's but two of seven, and he has been intercepted twice. This has not happened to Bernie before. And Bo Schembechler on the sidelines with some final words of instruction to his Michigan Wolverine. Well, it, it had been turnovers the first uh, three possessions. The defense has just played very, very solidly in the last couple. Here's the third down play now for Michigan. A minute and eight remaining in the half. Six-nothing Wolverine. Gerald White. And White's going to come up short of that first down. Julio Cortez and Bruce Fleming, number 58, combining on the stop. And it'll be a fourth down coming up. Darren McMurray also in there. Jimmy Johnson on the sideline. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who else made the play. Calhoun, uh, he was the guy that was supposed to be blocked by the fullback. And he uh, submarined him, went under, and made initial contact around the ankle. Hurricanes have called a timeout here. They know they're going to get the football back. The ball down at the Miami 43-yard line. And they've got 52 seconds remaining. After the Nebraska victory in the Orange Bowl, where Nebraska missed that two-point conversion, to show you the confidence of Bernie Kosar, Kosar made a statement. I wish they had made it. I still had 48 seconds. You know, that's all I needed last week. <laughs> You'll be sure to join us on many of these same stations. The Miami Hurricanes travel to West Lafayette, Indiana next Saturday to go against the Purdue Boilermakers. That's Saturday, September the 15th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Miami, 4-1, Mike time against Purdue. And it should be quite a battle. Freshman All-American Rod Woodson for Purdue and flanker Jeff Price, who caught 40 passes last year. Nobody back deep for the University of Miami, and Monty Robbins will kick it away. And this one may be down inside the 10. It takes a Michigan bounce, and yes, indeed, it is down inside the 10-yard line. So Miami has got more than 90 yards to travel downfield. That ball just hung up in the air. Good kick by Monty Robbins, and it's first and 10 for Miami, back at their own seven with 42 seconds remaining. Uh, once again, excellent defensive uh, uh, series for the Hurricanes. Uh, it'll be interesting here. 42 seconds. They've got three timeouts left. We've seen Kozar do some amazing things with very little time on the clock. Let's see what happens. Kosar breaks the huddle. Jake Spear comes to the right side of your screen. Now steps out of the picture a bit. There he is, down at the bottom of your screen now. And Bernie will throw. He's looking for Jake Spear. No, instead he throws it over the middle. It goes incomplete to the tight end. Tight end, Chris Hembro. And not to put a knock on Chris Hembro, but the Hurricanes are missing Willie Smith this afternoon. Boy, they sure are, aren't they? Quite a turnaround at that position in terms of being used. 15 receptions, the first two ball games. Really sort of the forgotten man in the offense the year before. There you see these statistics on Bernie Kosar. Five for 14. There are two interceptions for Bernie. He is back to pass again. He has a lot of time. Angles it to Oliver. And Oliver brings it up to the 15. It's shy of the first down. The clock is running. 26 seconds remaining. The Hurricanes have not called a timeout yet. 
And this half may just end right here. Well, that time, Kosar had somebody open uh, deep, not deep, but about 25, 30 yards down the right sideline. Uh, that time, chose to throw the safe one, uh, the short one out in the flat. This undoubtedly will be the final play of the half. Highsmith has the first down, but it matters not because the gun is down. Ending the first half here at Michigan Stadium. 104,000 on hand, and they have watched their Michigan Wolverines take a 6 to nothing lead at the end of the first half against the nation's number one ranked football team, the University of Miami Hurricanes. Miami, bad field position, and moving the football into Michigan territory seemingly at will, but two interceptions, two fumbles, undoing Miami in that first half. Yes, exactly. Sort of a, I mean, when you look back on it, you would expect it to be 17 to 14 or something like that. Certainly an excellent half for the Miami defense. Anytime your offense gives up the ball three times and you only give up one score, that, that's playing with great emotion uh, uh, defensively. Um, you wonder how many points Miami would have on the board if they hadn't have turned it over, because you're right. The first four times they had the ball, they pretty much marched down at will. The, the, the Michigan defense tightened up uh, as we got closer to the half, but I thought Miami played well. Strictly a turnover game. Okay, Michigan will receive the second half kickoff, and at the end of the first half, the score, the Wolverines of Michigan and a Bob Perryman six-yard run lead the Hurricanes of Miami by a score of six to nothing. This is the Cat Sports Network. Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 104,000 on hand. Spencer Ross along with Steve Grody. There's the score at halftime. A surprise. The University of Michigan Wolverine leading it by a score of 6 to nothing. Great defense by Michigan? Well, perhaps. But the big story, Miami turning the ball over in the first half four times each time in Michigan territory after they had, after they had seemingly at will just moved downfield. Two turnovers by Bernie Kosar in interceptions. He also fumbled one and Darrell Oliver fumbled the ball away one time, and that resulted in the game's only touchdown. Following a nine-play, 56-yard drive, Bob Perryman went over from six yards away to give the... And you have to be excited, though, generally, about the rejuvenated athletic program at the University of Miami. For many of you folks not familiar with it, this is a program that back in the 40s and 50s what was a super strong program. It fell on hard times. You had a great basketball team. People like Rick Barry, you bring it back can fall back now, and I'm sure it's not going to be long before you're a powerhouse in that. Well, you know, one of the great things about it, Miami's a very special place. And then you take a look at the University of Miami. It's an outstanding institution with a lot of quality people, and people have paid the price to develop an outstanding program, and we definitely feel that we have a great future. A great future. We talk basketball. We talk football. Your baseball program, one of the best in the United States of America, and you're making some improvements there also, aren't you? Well, there's no question about it. Ron Frazier has surely done a great job in our baseball program, won the national championship a couple years ago, went to Omaha. Our women won the national championship golf last year, of course, the national championship in football, and the reinstatement of college basketball, bringing Bill Foster and his outstanding staff. We're very excited. Next year, we kick off for basketball season, and it's going to be exciting. Sam, when you came over here from Washington State, everybody wants to come over and do a great job, but did you think it would turn as quickly as it did? Well, you know, it turned a lot quicker than I thought, and the place has tremendous potential, and of course, the great job that Howard and his staff have been doing with football throughout the years, and a lot of other things fall into place, and really the ability to attract an awful lot of outstanding people to join the department and a community where you can and we will generate the type of resources that are necessary to have an outstanding athletic program that will work hand in hand with the great institution. What about the community, the support? Is it increasing? Uh, is it increasing dramatically? Do you see it happening almost on a day-by-day -day basis? It's increasing dramatically. We, we've improved our facilities over $2 million in just a year. We've doubled our contributed funds, and we're up to about a million six. And we're hoping this coming year we'll go over two million. Our season tickets were 18.5 last year. We're over 29,000. We're approaching 30, and we just are very excited about the resources that we can generate in the community. Okay, Sam, and we're excited also, and happy to have you with us here on Cut. Well, thank you very much, and this is going to be a great second half. We've made some mistakes the first half, but. We'll be back in the second half. You heard us from Sam Jankowitz. We're at halftime here at Michigan Stadium with the Miami Hurricanes training the Michigan Wolverines by a score of 6-0. Coming along.
look at East, we'll look at Eastern football, and we'll be right back. In the first two weeks of the season, the Miami Hurricanes have stunned the experts, giving new coach Jimmy Johnson his first win in the kickoff classic against the favored Auburn team. Then following that, with a heart-stopping victory against their arch rival, the Florida Gators. The final seconds were ticking down when Bernie Kosar hit Eddie Brown with a game winner. The key to the success, the remarkable quarterback, Kosar. He has a tremendous amount of poise and confidence. You know, just talking to him one-on-one, -on -one, he, he, um, you know, he really just kind of presents himself such that, uh, you know, you know that he's going to get the job done. That's how he feels about it, and I think uh, he presents that same feeling to the players that surround him. Uh, that's the number one thing. Plus, he's a very intelligent player. He's a three-five student uh, in economics. He's a uh, level-headed uh, young man. And in, in the offensive system that we have, it takes someone that's very intelligent, and he is able to step on the field and control the ball game. In Pittsburgh, they're still saying Pitt is it, despite a disappointing loss to Brigham Young in the season opener. There were plenty of encouraging signs, and Coach Boog Fazio hopes the experience gained against BYU will help down the road. Fazio feels that the key to the Panthers' success will be how quickly they can develop some of their younger players. You have to have depth, and um, it's hard to get depth anymore. I don't care what, what uh, team you're, you're coaching, and most of our depth will be young freshmen and sophomores, and it's very difficult to expect them to perform at that level in, in emergency situations. However, I guess everyone's faced with it, so we'll have to just do the best we can. Even with the early loss, do not count Pittsburgh out. The Pittsburgh Panthers can be an awesome team, and once they start to roll, they may never stop. has become increasingly competitive over the past few years and the latest team to join the ranks of contenders Syracuse the Orangemen stunning victory over West Virginia to end the 83 season showed how far they had come for the first time in several seasons they opened with an experienced quarterback in Todd Norley they have the always explosive running game and swift receivers and the Orangemen may blow the roof off the dome this year most importantly, for the first time in many years, they believe they can beat anyone. Well, basically, what we're talking about is I think we're going to be a pretty good football team, and it's encouraging for the first time since we've been here. I think we've got everything resolved offensively, defensively, and special teams. And I think the perennial uh, football teams that are contending every year will be that way, and that's the first time we've come to that level. The Boston College Eagles opened their season last Saturday night with a resounding victory over Western Carolina. With Doug Flutie at the controls again this season, the Eagles hope to fly nonstop to the top ten. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to go all the way this year. Uh, that's, that's the one thing that I'm really determined that I want. Um, you know, we've, we've progressed over the last couple of years, and we really think we have a, a great potential this year. So I'm shooting for it all and I want to be playing New Year's Day. A few years ago, one or two teams dominated Eastern football, but Boston College coach Jack Bicknell is happy to see that situation change. I think there's more balance now. I think any team in the East, virtually any team in the East, can beat anybody else, whereas uh, five or ten years ago that wasn't true. The, the top two teams were the class of the league, and that was about it. But now West Virginia has proven they can play with anybody, and... I think we have, I think Syracuse has, I think Temple is a team that has played really tough against a lot of the opponents, and Rutgers has a, a new commitment to their program, so I think the East uh, is, is really balanced, and anybody can beat anybody. college football a big year in store and you'll see it on catch and 104,000 on hand here at Michigan Stadium their Wolverines are leading the University of Miami Hurricanes by a score of six to nothing Spencer Ross along with Steve Grody on an afternoon that has seen Steve the Hurricanes just make too many mistakes uh, it's as simple as that it really is uh, 
I thought uh, towards the end there that the Michigan defensive secondary really started playing well. It looks to me like he's not finding his initial receiver uh, as easily as he did in the first two ball games, having to go to that second and third receiver. And uh, that's when the, the pass blocking will, will tend to break down, and that's when more mistakes happen. Um, so. Well, the first touchdown was scored by Bob Perryman of the University of Michigan. The Hurricanes have moved from their own 20 down to the Michigan 46-yard line. And there you see some of the... I don't think that's Michigan. Perriman in no, there. No, that's but... not Perriman. He was stopped at the 26-yard <laughs> line or whatever. But Darrell Oliver fumbled the ball away, and Michigan then moved the ball downfield and wound up down at the University of Miami, six-yard line, where they had a second down and five. And You're a Michigan be... graduate. What's going on <laughs> down out there, Stephen? I don't think I can talk about that right there. <laughs> it was a great drive for Michigan and the first time they got the ball. They took a lot of time off the clock. And with the new quarterback, I thought it was extremely important that they get something going uh, uh, for his confidence sake. Uh, fortunately, although they've got a, a new quarterback, they've got a, uh, a supporting cast with a lot of experience. And, and uh, Harbaugh threw a couple uh, good passes in that drive. Uh, they ran the ball, took up some time, and uh, it turned out to be the only score. Well, Michigan, of course, uh, normally, usually keeps the ball on the ground, a lot of quick pitches. They have not done that. We've seen Harbaugh drop back, and Harbaugh hit his man and hit his man very well throughout this first half of play. So at the end of the first half, the score is the University of Ross and Steve Grody back here at the University of Michigan in a ball game which saw Miami march out onto the field and it looked like the Hurricanes were just going to pick up where they left off last weekend against the University of Florida at Tampa. Bernie Kosar was on target on the Hurricanes first drive completing his first three passes and then problems developed. Well it looked like Michigan's worst fears were going to be uh, realized when they marched the ball down the field. It's been the Michigan defense as we said that uh, has come up with the turnovers. Well, you're taking a look at Harbaugh here, and Harbaugh uncorking some good passes throughout the first half. This one setting up a touchdown to uh, Steve Johnson as he hit him down the far side, and then it is Perryman straight up the middle. Right up the middle behind uh, Belordis, James, and Tabuccino, and that play designed to get four yards, and that's what they got. That was excellent blocking, and that was the culmination of, the, of Michigan's first possession. Darrell Oliver had uh, fumbled the ball away, and Kosar, under a lot of pressure, throws over the middle, and Doug Mallory is going to come up with a big interception at the 10-yard line for the University of Michigan. And that time, Oliver was open about five yards uh, uh, shorter in that pattern, but Kosar was a little pressured, and he made a bad decision there. That ball's right in the hand. Tony Gant then bops it up into the air, and Rodney Lyles pulls off the interception to stop yet another. University of Miami Drive. And if you haven't seen uh, Michigan play that much, uh, you'll notice the rest of the second half that their defense is a swarming defense. They're always around the ball. So anytime it comes loose, anytime it's been up in the air, it's been uh, the swarming, pursuing defense that's been there to, to pick up the, uh, the loose fumbles and the interception. Well, the highlights have not exactly gone Miami's way. They've gone the men in the blues way. The University of Michigan, they lead it by a score of six to nothing. We're getting set for the second half kickoff. Miami will have to kick the ball off. Now, remember this, uh, and you mentioned the East Carolina game from last year. The defense's job and strategy is to keep their offense in the ball game. Get, put them in a position to win the game. Four of the last five Miami games have been decided in the last quarter, and it's because the defense has kept their team in the ball game. So it's six to nothing, certainly not out of, out of the out of the question for Miami. Well, you take a look at the statistics, they are very even. Miami with eight more total yards, only 11 more passing, and Michigan with three more yards on the rushing side. But the turnovers, that's the big story. Four for Miami, zero for the University of Michigan. And once again, with a new quarterback, uh, they have to be completely pleased with his performance. Jim Harbaugh, Miami will kick off. Greg Cox, will tee the ball up at the 40-yard line. The freshman from Fort Lauderdale has been so impressive for the University of Miami. Mark Felix will do the kicking off here for the University of Miami instead of Greg Cox. 
trailing in the ball game six to nothing and the defense will have to be called on once again back deep for the University of Michigan to receive the second half kickoff is Gerald White. Remember now, Michigan won the flip and chose to use their uh, decision at the start of the second half. That's why they are receiving. This is Jamie Morris, two yards deep in the end zone. And Morris had some room, but he's taken down at the 23-yard line. He got some room because of a clip. A penalty flag is dropped back at the 12-yard line, and uh, Michigan will be pushed a wee bit further back. Boy, no way to start the second half. It's going to put them back about their five-yard line. Miami defense played well in the first half. The offense with those turnovers, four turnovers for the University of Miami, and it's backed them up. And right here, Michigan gets backed up on the penalty inside the 10-yard line. They're going to mark it at the six. Referee John Nealon. And first and ten for the Wolverines as we start the third quarter. The ball at the seven-yard line. Miami trailing by a score of six to nothing. Jim Harbaugh, the quarterback. And this is Perryman, the fullback. Julio Cortez, number 99, leading the charge with Dallas Cameron, number 64, the left tackle, a senior from Melbourne, Florida, for the University of Miami. Again on the play, up to the nine, and it'll be second down and eight for the Wolverines. Well, this would be the real important series now for that defense to hold. Uh, the first time in the ball game where you can legitimately think about getting great field position for, for that offensive unit. I think the only other time they started outside their 20s when Michigan went for it on fourth and one about midfield and missed it. On second down now. Here's play action. Harbaugh not afraid to put it in the air. And he hits Dean up at the 22-yard line. Colbert Payne in on the stop. But when in doubt, Mr. Harbaugh finds number 25, Vince Dean, the senior from Southfield, Michigan, and yet another reception. They, they told us that uh, Harbaugh was cool, calm, and poised, and I'll tell you what, he showed us all of that uh, so far in this ball game. Uh, surprised that Michigan threw the ball down here, not a whole lot like a Bo Schembechler team, but evidently he's uh, developed some confidence in this Harbaugh kid, and uh, that's a good play and gets him out of, uh, out of a hole. Play action again. Harbaugh put it up in the air, looking for Steve Johnson in complete. He's not afraid to throw the football. He is now 6 4 9 in the ballgame. And we've seen him go drop back uh, quite a bit and from the far hash mark uh, uh, in the middle of the field, throw to the other sideline. And that's a, that's a tough pass. If somebody picks that one off, there's nobody out there to stop him from taking it all the way back. 6 for 10 officially for Jim Harbaugh. Second down and 10 coming up for the Michigan Wolverines, who lead it by a score of 6 to nothing. 14 09 remaining in the third quarter. back is Gerald White. And White gets the call, and White taken down by Dallas Cameron, back behind the line of scrimmage. Cameron, the left tackle, coming in and stuffing that play for a loss of about three yards. That's, that's just one outstanding play. Cameron, of course, is a little bit of an undersized kid, but a, has an oversized heart, great determination. They say if they had the luxury of playing him at linebacker, uh, he would be there. 6'2", 245 pounds. And Michigan now with a third and 10 coming up. A 15, number 25, down at the bottom of your screen. He's looking for Dean. He's got him, but he overthrew him. This Dean standing all alone on the 30. No white shirt with about five yards of him. He could catch the ball, move up for the first down instead of Harbaugh's first bad pass to Bogle. Well, it looked to me, too, like he, he caught Dean right in the middle of a step. He, he, planted, he planted it turned outside with a little bit off balance, and I don't think he was in position to jump. I think if he'd have been on balance, he'd have been able to make this reception. A uh, little play, play action, and let's see. Now, we got there a little bit late, but I, I, I felt like it was just off balance, and that's why I couldn't jump in. Monty Robbins kicking. Brent Perriman lets it drop. Takes a missing oh. pass and stays inbound. 
going to be down at the 34-yard line. So Miami will get it in pretty good field position, considering where they've been getting the football throughout the ball game. It'll be down at the 35-yard line. Uh, although, in all honesty, it, it hasn't prevented them from uh, 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 moving the ball, and it certainly hasn't seemed to uh, affect their play selection. Every time they had the ball deep, they, they drove it a good uh, 40, 50 yards. Once again, uh, we have to say it's a turnover. <laughs> First and 10 from their own 20. They moved out of the Michigan 46 from their own 20 in X position. Down to the Michigan 30. First time a fumble, second time an interception. Here's first down now for the Miami Hurricanes. Kosar getting a high snip. Finds a hole over the 40, gets to the 42, a gain of seven. And Brad Cochran in the stop. Darrell Oliver with that carry. It'll be marked down at the 41, a gain of six yards. This is just an excellently blocked play, uh, both by the front line and once again, Alonzo, watch Alonzo Highsmith's block on the linebacker, which enables it once again to, to go from a, a simple four-yard pickup into an eight-yard pickup. Second down and four. We're back live now. This is Highsmith. Breaking the tackle, getting the first down up to the 48-yard line. Grant Cochran in on the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. So it's a first down for the Hurricanes with 12 and a half remaining in the third quarter. Once again, they blew out the defensive end that time. If Cochran doesn't come on and come up and hang on, Heisman goes down the sideline for uh, uh, about 10 or 20 more yards. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. Early stages of the third quarter. Michigan leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Straight up the middle of high Smith gets nothing this time. Number 52, Kevin Brooks to 92. Joe Gray, the middle guard, combining on the stop for the University of Michigan. Well, with this, uh, this planning defensive front that Michigan plays, uh, so often it becomes a guessing game. That time with the, they plant by the, the offensive uh, uh, guard in the backfield for a good defensive play. Second and 10 now for the Hurricanes. 6-0, Michigan out in front. Bernie Kosar. Kosar has some good yardage. Midfield taken down at the 44 of Michigan by Dieter Harris, a strong safety, a gain of eight yards on the play. And it'll be a third down and two coming up now for Miami. The take with the Gideon. Certainly do. Brooks That's going to hurt. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you who got hurt again. It's Kevin Brooks, and it looked like it would be a similar type of injury. Uh, I don't know if it's to his neck or he came in and hit Kosar on the way down, and I think he maybe aggravated that injury that took him out of the game uh, earlier. Kevin Brooks, the preseason All-American, number 52. Here is Kosar to throw on third down. Pass Highsmith, but I don't think he has the first down. Brad Cochran is the man who prevents it with a good, strong, hard hit on Alonzo Highsmith. It's going to be shy of the first down. And you know what they've, they've made Kosar do today? I, I've seen him throw a solid four or five passes off balance. Watch. He wants to hit, I believe it's a tight end, right over the middle. But look, he's throwing this ball as he's off balance. Now, it's a completion. Um, once again, just the, the defensive back secondary forcing him to go to a second and third receiver. Well, earlier, Michigan went for it on fourth down. They did not make it. Miami needs less than a yard, and Jimmy Johnson says, let's get it right here. We're in their territory. So moving on the line. Oh, a good hard hit on Todd Sandage. Todd Sandage hit and pushed back. There is a flag dropped on the play. Offside, Michigan. And that was a close one. You saw the defensive player uh, jump on the note on the uh, on the center. It looked like he got back, but evidently not. So a break for Miami. Instead of being stopped on fourth down, it'll be a first down for the Canes down at the 38. What a hit on Sanders right here. There's the jump right there. It looked like he got back, but I guess not. Look at that. So Miami will be able to continue its drive right here, first and 10 at the 38-yard line of the University of Michigan. And very close to us. Stanley Shakespeare at the 32. Cochran takes him and hits him down. Gain of six yards on the play. Second down and four. 
Excellent. Their third reception of the ball game. Excellent discipline by Cochran that time. He was about a half a step from being able to come up and make that interception. Started to go for it, thought better of it. If he gets beat out there, nobody touches him until he gets to the end zone. We have not seen Willie Smith today. That ankle injury apparently a little worse than uh, earlier diagnosed. Second down and four. Coast on. Uh -oh. All alone is Eddie Brown. Touchdown, Hurricane! Bernie Kosar finds Eddie Brown all alone down the sideline. Garland Rivers, the right strong side quarterback, working within 10 yards of him. And Brown has another big touchdown, and the Hurricanes have tied it at six. And I don't know if this is a secondary receiver, but that time Kosar faked the pass just inside. He must have drawn uh, Rivers up, floated it right out there. He's wide open. And Greg Cox, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, will come out to kick the extra point. Miami has tied it after a scoreless, frustrating first half. At 6-6, six and six, Rick Tootin will hold. And the Canes have taken the lead. Greg Cox perfectly through the upright. A drive of 65 yards in seven plays. And the big one... A 32-yard pass to Eddie Brown for the touchdown. Chance to look at it from behind Kosar this time. Now watch, oh, he's following somebody coming across the middle. I thought he faked right here to Oliver, and boy, Rivers just really got beat badly. So Miami has taken the lead by a score of 7-6. We're in the third quarter. This is the Cats Sports Network. and Steve Grody back here at Michigan Stadium. The Hurricanes taking the lead for the first time at 7-6 and Mark Seelig kicks off back deep. Jamie Morris. And Morris is not going to run this one out. That was a case where Morris, who was a freshman, should have utilized that uh, new rule. Let the ball bounce, go out of the end zone, and it comes out to the 30. Let's take a look at this uh, touchdown again from a different angle. You see Kosar, and I don't know who's who the primary receiver is on this, but he does such a great job looking right away from the defense. Rivers, who, who played in the nickel uh, defense right there, number 13, just gets beat bad. And um, not bad that, Miami, that you only give Miami seven points and over two quarters of play, but uh, certainly you can't hold this, this offense down for an entire four quarters. Seven plays, 65 yards for the score, and here is Gerald White on first down. Dallas Cameron into the stop, short game, two yards, up to the 22. It'll be second down and eight coming up now for the University of Michigan Wolverines. There you see the totals on White. He's had a pretty good ball game this morning. Yeah, he certainly has. He's a flashing runner, uh, surprisingly strong for being uh, just 6'1", 205. You've seen him break a number of tackles today. He's having himself a good afternoon. Second down and eight. Harbaugh over the middle. He gets his tight end. Tim Nelson, first down. Darrell Fullington in on the stop. Tim Nelson has been the forgotten man thus far this afternoon. He was their number one receiver last year with 41 receptions in his first one of the 1984 season. Well, that was just a, a real nicely executed play by Harbaugh. Uh, so you see the, the, the play action right here. Completely confused the uh, defensive line. He gets outside. Once again, he throws that ball well, running left and throwing it back to the right. First and 10 from their own 38 for the University of Michigan as we come back live. Harbaugh out of the eye, gives it to Jamie Morris, and Morris gets up to the 40. Kent Calhoun, number two, the strong safety for the game, up to make the stop. Morris, of course, is the, the brother of Joe Morris from the, the Giants. Just a freshman, a water bug type player. I believe he's just 5'7". About that time he made the wrong cut. I thought that if he had cut back into the inside, he had an additional blocker on the linebacker, maybe had a better chance of breaking it. Second down at seven coming up now for Michigan. Dean goes to the top of your screen. Harbaugh's in trouble, and Harbaugh's going to be sacked. Kevin Fagan, number 95, comes in for the sack. 
to bring him down at the 36-yard line. So a loss of five on the play. It'll be a third down and 12. Four receivers on that pattern. It looked like he was uh, looking for the tight end right over the middle. Was covered by the uh, linebacker. Eventually, the, uh, the pass blocking broke down. I tell you, it's a beautiful day here, but there are tremendous gusts of wind. It's a beautiful day to sit and watch a football game, almost summery, but you get that autumnal tight breeze. And here is Harbaugh over the middle, beam, and it's intercepted by the Hurricanes, Darrell Fullington. And Fullington returns the ball back into Michigan territory. An opportunity at a first down. Dean leaped up, just couldn't hold it, deflected off his fingertips, and Darrell Fullington, the freshman from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, comes up with the interception and a break here for the University of Miami. This is a very well-thrown pass by Harbaugh. Right into the hands of Dean. He had to jump a little bit for it, possibly a little high. Look at the defense. Uh, the coverage good. People in position to pick off that deflected pass. So Miami now. First turnover of the ball game for the University of Michigan. And the Canes have it first and 10. Down at the Michigan 45-yard line. 7-6 Miami, 7-53. Remaining in the third quarter. High Smith. Stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Going nowhere. Jim Scarcelli, the left outside linebacker, in on the stop. This is where you tell what defenses are made of. We saw the Miami defense after four turnovers only give up one score. The sudden change defense now uh, for Michigan. Second and ten for the Hurricanes. Bernie Kosar. Eddie Brown under through him at the 30-yard line. Brown again free. And I'll tell you, if you're a quarterback like Garland Rivers, and you've been beat as badly as you were the last night. <laughs> You tend to drag, drop back a little, and that's going to give Eddie Brown quite a bit of room. Uh, I, I thought that there was just a missed coverage there. Rivers was, once again, a little bit out of position. It, it just looks to me like Kosar is not setting up and, and throwing the ball. It looked to me like he was backpedaling a little bit that time when he let it go and, and badly uh, underthrew a wide-open receiver. 7.25 remaining in the third quarter. Third and 10 for Miami. The rush is on. Kosar and I think just couldn't hold on to the football. Alonzo Highsmith down at the 38-yard line. It goes incomplete. Miami will have to kick it away. And Steve Finney will come out to do the kicking. Well, the offensive line uh, did on this play what they do so well. Both linebackers are blitzing, and there's plenty of time to throw this ball. Once again, when the blitz is on, uh, you want to get rid of the ball quickly. Excellently thrown ball just, uh, just dropped. Had it been completed, I doubt if it would have been enough for a first down. 104,000 on hand, and Steve Minnick will kick the ball away for the University of Miami Hurricanes, who are leading it now by a score of 7-6. to six. We have a pretty decent win to his back. Tony Gant is back in single safety for Michigan. He's going to let it go, hits it for two, rolls into the end zone. We'll get a touchback. Michigan will take over first and 10 on its own 20-yard line. 7-11 remaining in this third quarter of play. Miami on a coast guard to Eddie Brown, 32-yard pass, leading it by a score of 7-6. So we'll take a break here from Michigan Stadium. 7-6, Miami's out in front, and we'll be getting right back. for Michigan from their own 20. Miami leading by a score of 7 to 6. Darrell White gets only back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Number 95, Kevin Fagan leading the charge along with 99, Julio Cortez. It'll be second and 10 for Michigan. Well, Fagan's the strongest player on the team. He's got the ability, they say, to be the best ever in his uh, position on that line. And they've got nine guys in the pros, so that's and you saw his strength on there because he, he beat a couple guys and uh, on that block and dumped them for a little bit of a loss. Strength, the bench press is 520 pounds. Here's play action. Harbaugh, he's got his hand, the tight end once again to Nelson. And Nelson has it up, I believe, for the first down. Doug McFadden, number 43, finally bumping him out of bounds. But it's the first down for the University of Michigan Wolverines. Well, that time
time they ran off the cornerback uh, with Vince Bean on a long pattern. Uh, after the play action pass, they just wait for Nelson to come dragging across the middle. This is where that, you now he calls for it right here. This is where those linebackers have to look backside for those for that tight end coming across the field. Harbaugh once again made a good pass on uh, off balance. First and 10 from their own 33-yard line for Michigan. Gerald White, 35, 37, before they finally drag down from behind. And it'll be a pickup on the play of four yards and a second down and six coming up now. One of the things that the Miami defense has not allowed to happen is they haven't given up a big play. Um, the one long drive for a touchdown, the only score. They've made Michigan, for the most part, uh, drive it down the field. The odds are, if it's going to take you 15, 16 plays and move it the length of the field, odds are that you're probably going to turn it over or have a penalty. So it'll stop yourself. There's movement, but back in. Uh-oh. And here's the break down the far side by Perryman and Perryman. That's inside the Miami 40-yard line. Perryman has scored the game's only touchdown. Race went off the right tackle into Hurricane territory. Good block by the foot end, number 25, Vince Bean. Perryman's uh, got great quickness at that fullback position. Remember, he's a former tailback. Runs just out of the reach there at the defensive end. Once he gets down the sideline, the defensive backs simply have got the angle on him and uh, finally bring him down. First and ten now for the University of Michigan. Ooh, going nowhere. Seven Vegas. That's the way it quiets down the crowd, isn't it? Makes Gerald White down and does silence this crowd indeed for a loss on the play. The line of scrimmage was the 38. They're going to march it back to the 41, so a loss of three. It'll be second down and... 13 coming up for the Wolverines. Of course, first down is, is, is always important uh, in any offensive attack, but certainly for a team like Michigan that doesn't really like to throw the ball a lot. They, they need that uh, four or five yard gain on first. They've been putting it up quite a bit this afternoon. Play action again. Marbaugh, plenty of time. Tim Nelson once again has the first down. Oh, that's great effort there. Tim Nelson didn't catch any in the first half. He's become the chief offensive weapon here in the third quarter. His third reception of the third quarter. Boy, and they're looking for him now. They're just running off the back with a, a long route but with the, with the uh, split ends and wide out. Looking for Nelson, just dragging across the, across the field. Almost stepped out of bounds, picked up the first down with that leap. Down at the 26-yard line, so a 15-yard pickup. First and 10 for the Wolverines. And once again, Gerald White gets the call. Gets down to the 20. Greg Jones in on the stop, but good first down play. Six-yard pickup for Michigan. Well, Perriman with the big run uh, uh, before. Two big blocks in this drive. He's knocked out the uh, uh, Cortez twice on plays right there on, at the line of attack, point of attack. And they said he was a, a fellow that needed imp uh, improvement in his blocking, but uh, he's doing a, a yeoman's job at that position today. First and ten, down at the Hurricane 26-yard line. And once again, Perriman has a first down, goal to go for the Wolverines. Darrell Fullington in on the stop, but a pickup of 15 yards on the play for Bob Perriman. Some good blocking up front, Clay Miller, and he is the workhorse up front. I tell you, from a coaching uh, staff standpoint, this tells you a lot about the character of your team, what to come back uh, uh, after a score and then march it right back down the field. First and 10, just outside the tent, so technically the Wolverines could get a first down. Here's the option, Gerald White. And White inside the tent, taken down at the 7, Joe Colbrand, number 48, the right hand, comes in on the stop. Uh, in retrospect, it, it probably would have been better to give it to the fullback uh, on that situation. The play was very well defensed. Uh, they, got, they got excellent containment on the outside, gave the inside people plenty of time to pursue. You'll see Colbrand will uh, eventually make the tackle. There you see they string it out, force the pitch, 
Cobrand comes in. I believe they got him for a face man. There is a pen there was a penalty on the play, and it has been walked off against Miami. It's a face mask. The ball down at the four-yard line. First and goal. Goal to go now for the Michigan Wolverine at the Miami four. Miami with a precarious one-point lead. The penalty story, again, not how many you get, when you get it, and both have hurt Miami. The first one, they gave it a big first down deep in the Michigan territory. This one gives the Wolverines a goal to go. And the pitch up. Oh, oh whoa. what a tackle. Van Lowe looked like he was heading for the end zone, and Darrell Bullington took him down at the three-yard line. Second and goal coming up. Well, they say Fullerton may be the best athlete in that backfield. He can run, jump. He's a big play, man. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, when he, when he gets the pitch, this looks like it's a sure touchdown. Nobody there. He comes out of nowhere. And in a one-on-one -on -one situation, he just drives a bigger man right out of bounds. Here he comes, number 19. Darrell Fullerton, great defensive play. As we're back live on second and goal. And toward the end zone, Perry the touchdown. touchdown of the day and he has given Michigan the lead at 12 to 7 and on that drive it would appear that Michigan uh, seems to think they found a weakness in that in that defensive front they've run off that right tackle spot behind Nelson and Miller kicking out uh, on Cortez with a blocking back and they've run successfully off that right tackle spot a number of times in that long drive Harriman had a 17 yard run on that drive and he brings it over from the three yard line and Michigan is going for two. Harbaugh, he's going to be taken down. Forget it. Willie Lee Broke is the man who stopped it on the two-yard two-point conversion attempt. So Miami's lead is Miami, that is, is trailing now by five. And we'll take a break here from Michigan Stadium, where the Wolverines have taken the lead by a score of 12 to seven. This is the Ken Sports Network. will kick it off barefoot kicker and back deep for the University of Miami Hurricanes will be J.C. Penny there's the story 306 remaining in the third quarter 12-7 Michigan out in front a sloppy kick called in at the eight yard line by David Kinai and Kinai returns it up over the 20 to the 21 and that's where the Hurricanes will put it into play first and ten from their own 21 Trailing in the ball game by a score of 12 to 7. Typical Miami game, right? That's right. <laughs> It'll be decided in the fourth quarter, won't it? By and, a and a typical Michigan drive. Uh, a lot of plays, lots of yards. Uh, that, believe me, we, if we'd had a camera down there, we may have seen Bo Schembechler smile. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, 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 when he sees those kind of numbers, 11 plays, 80 yards, touchdown, he smiles. First and 10 for Miami from their own 21. Trailing by a score of 12 to 7 late in the third quarter. And Bernie Kosar goes to the end. And he finds his man out of the backfield. Warren Williams up to the 25. Tim Anderson in on the stop, but a gain of only four on the play. And it'll be second and six coming up for the Miami Hurricanes. Well, it looked, uh, it appeared to me that, that that's what the play was designed to do get four yards. They ran the two wide outs deep down the sideline and just ahead the back coming out of the backfield. Well, Willie Smith is in the lineup for the first time this afternoon. The tight end who has caught 15 passes in his first two games for the Hurricanes. And let's see if Kosar starts utilizing him. Takes the blitz. Right oh, up the middle. This is Highsmith. He's got a first down at the 37. Alonzo Highsmith. Straight up the middle. Gets 12 yards. Rodney Lyles in on the stop. That can happen sometimes if you fake that blitz. 
and you get caught uh, on a quick snap like that, you're off balance, a little bit out of position, and they broke it right up the middle. I slip to 12 more yards, which uh, gets him in the ball game. 12 carries unofficially for 90 yards. So he is approaching his second 100-yard game of the season. Coastar looking for Shakespeare, but it is picked off by Brad Cochran. Cochran at the 45-yard line intercepts Bernie Coastar, the third interception of the day for the University of Michigan Wolverines. And I'll tell you what, if he had this back, watch point number 24. He's going to be absolutely wide open when he gets through the line. There's nobody within 15 yards. You could catch that ball and run it 20 yards right down the middle of the field. He would have to think twice about that throw. Cochran was in front of the receiver the entire the entire route. Well, the turnover hurts Miami once again. Michigan's got it back first and ten from its own 44-yard line, with the Hurricanes trailing in the ball game by a score of 12 to seven. Brad Cochran, a preseason All-American, had five interceptions last year. One of the Sugar Bowl against Auburn. His first one here of 84. Indeed, a biggie. Jamie Morris. Morris. Breaking the tackle at the line of scrimmage, getting up to the midfield strike. George Myra Jr. in the lineup now. Comes in on the stop, and this, this is the first time you are watching the University of Miami football this year. Yes, that name does sound familiar. What a great quarterback All-American he was for the University of Miami back in the late 50s, early 50s. Big, key defensive uh, stand right now. Saw Jimmy Johnson on the sideline. He is concerned. The team is down by five. And Michigan starting to move once again. Jamie Morris is picked up at the line of scrimmage. It's only a yard on the play. And Jerome Brown in on the stop. And that's the exact spot that Michigan has been attacking here in the second quarter. They ran over that right tackle spot three or four times in that long 11 play drive. They went right back after it on second down. If he hadn't tripped, it looked like the, uh, a big gainer was there once again. So Shem Beckler on the sidelines. His team now has a third and three. Greg Armstrong, number 34, is the single setback. Harbaugh deflected over the middle. Intended for Gerald White. Bruce Fleming deflecting on the play, and it'll be fourth down coming up for Michigan, so the Miami defense has done its job with 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Well, that ball was just thrown a, a, for as short a pass as it was, and for how short the route was it was run, the ball was thrown a little too hard uh, and a little too high. So, Monty Robbins out to kick it away. And he has kicked well this afternoon. Brent Perlman back in single safety for the Miami Hurricanes. And it's 15, 20, and that'll be it. Perlman taken down at the 20, first to 10, coming up. Perlman is the man who made the tackle on Perryman. Right? Huh? Bob Perryman huh? tackled <laughs> Brett Perryman. <laughs> Names are spelled a little differently. The Miami player... D-E-R-R-I-M-A-N for Michigan D-E-R-R-Y-M-A-N. Now, of course, the Michigan players scored both touchdowns. So <laughs> well, that defense that just took the field for the Wolverines just got a, a slight standing ovation. A slight standing ovation. A slight standing ovation. <laughs> they got halfway out of their seats, and then they saw them come out of the huddle. Like a minor spring bank, yeah. right? You can't walk <laughs> the three and a half. <laughs> Here's first down. And Highsmith breaks one over the 30, and a great tackle by Tony Gant, number 14 for Michigan, saving what might have been a touchdown play. Instead, Highsmith does get 15, and he has now gone over the 100-yard mark in the ball game. He is just absolutely explosive, isn't he? And he, he changes direction so well and seems to accelerate off of that off of his cut. He picks up full speed very quickly, well, too. Like like running that the bank on those around that track coming around that bend first and ten for miami their own 35 12 seconds remain in the third quarter and high smith again 40 45 tony gant again with perhaps a touchdown saving tackle but once again alonzo Highsmith with a big gainer this one for 18 yards and with five seconds remaining in the third quarter, that will definitely be the final play. Well, and this is what the Miami offense can do to you by the run and via the air. They can get out of bad field position and, and move the ball 40 yards down the field in a matter of seconds. 
Well, they have now moved it 33 on consecutive carries by Highsmith. As the gun sounds, ending the third quarter here at Michigan Stadium. 12-7 Michigan, this is the Cat Sports Network. Fourth quarter is underway, and Stanley Shakespeare takes Bernie Kosar's pass down at the 23-yard line for a gain of 24 yards on the play. You know, Frank Merrill used to write the story of the exciting finishes, but all he had to do was pick up pen in hand and scribe it on paper. But this is real, and in five of their last ball games, Miami has come from behind in the fourth quarter to win four times in the final minute. I don't think Mr. Merrill would beat it, but in reality, you can go to the well once too often, Steve. Uh, you know, you don't like to be in a position where you have to win it in the fourth quarter. You like to have them sewed up, but, uh, I mean, when you look at the teams that they've played over the last five ball games, so you're not going to usually have things sewn up by at the end of three quarters. Well, here is Miami now with a second and five as Darrell Oliver picks up five more yards. Mike Mallory in at the stop. This drive began at the Miami 20. High to 15 yards, then 18 yards. A 24-yard pass to Shakespeare, five yards by Oliver, and the team are down at the 18 of Michigan. High Smith, he stopped this time. Kevin Brooks, number 52, leading the charge for the University of Michigan Wolverines, and it'll bring up a third down now for the University of Miami. Once again, that third and short, which they've had uh, so many problems with over the first couple of ball games. Third down and four. There are your totals in the ball game. Pretty even ball game. Five more yards for Miami, but the Hurricanes are trailing by a score of 12-7 early in the fourth quarter. Third and four right here. Looks like an audible. Took a lot of time at the line. Kosar's looking for Eddie Brown, and he could not hold on to it. Garland Rivers, who was beaten earlier for the Hurricanes' only touchdown this time, bothers Eddie Brown enough to make it an incomplete, and it'll be fourth down coming up. I'm sure it was an audible, and initially it looked like Rivers was going to be in, in position to make the interception. I think he mistimes his jump. I thought he started to jump a little too soon, and then the ball almost comes right down and... Uh, in Brown's hands, it looks look like he would have been out of bounds, but uh... well, Miami's going to call a timeout here. They have not sent Greg Cox out into the field, so on fourth and four, the Hurricanes just may very well be going for a score right here. So with a score, Michigan 12, the University of Miami 7. We'll get back. This is the Cat Sports Network. University of Michigan marching band on the sidelines right now. Part of this crowd of more than 104,000. Spencer Ross and Steve Grody, happy to be with you on the Cats Television Network. University of Miami has a fourth down and four at the Michigan 17. They trail does Miami 12-7, and the Hurricanes are negating the field goal. They're gone for it. Coast are over the middle. Eddie Brown couldn't hold it. Michigan takes over. So the gamble fails, and Michigan has recaptured the football. I'm totally surprised. I, they did not go for the I just can't believe that they wouldn't have kicked the field goal. I'll tell you what's so difficult about this pass. It seems like with uh, only four yards to play, you should almost make that cut and just stop. There's so much danger in, in running right dead into the defense down the middle. It looks to me like he had tried. He was starting to stop already, afraid of the big-time hit. So Michigan takes over, first and 10 on its own 17-yard line, leading Miami by a score of 12 to 7. And Perryman takes it up to about the 19-yard line. Jerome Brown comes into the stop. The clock has not quite become a factor yet. We have 13 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. But the score reads 12 for Michigan and 7 for the University of Miami. I, I'm just saying that as well as they've moved the ball, it would seem that they would at least be in field goal position once again. Now they Two field goals and you, you win the ball game. Second down and eight now for the University of Michigan. 
Miami trailing as they have so often in the fourth quarter. Play action here, Carbone. Oh, he's, he's open. He's got a man. He's, he's open. And he holds on to it. Darrell Fullington made the stop, but this team with a beautiful reception with hands all in his face. What a backbreaker that play is. Take a look at it again. This is nothing but a streak pattern. Right down the sideline. Wide open from the go. A little underthrown, or who knows what might have happened. B does an excellent job of turning around. You know, so often you'll see a guy lose his balance when he turns back towards the ball. Back live, Gerald White takes it from the 36-yard line down to near the 30-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. So a gain of seven yards in the play. It'll be marked at the 29th. The pass to Dean worth 45 big Michigan yards. Character time for the defense once again. They cannot give up a touchdown. A field goal would put Miami of Florida in position for a, a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and another tie. There's the score, 12 to 7 on second down and four. And a good defensive play this time by Kevin Fagan on Gerald White. Drops him for a loss, brings up a third down for Michigan. They're four for 12 on third down conversion. I don't remember calling Fagan's name uh, that often in the first half, but he's made some big plays here in the, in the second uh, half, three or four different times uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Third down and four coming up for Michigan. They're looking for the big upset in their home opener. They have not lost the home opener since Bo Schembechler took over. This is his 16th year. They won 14. They have tied one. They tied Stanford in 1975 on 34. Play action for Harbaugh. And the pass is intercepted. Uzuyo Cortez. And he brings it up to the 45-yard line. Big Uyo Cortez, the senior left end for the University of Miami, picks it off. And a key play right there for the University of Miami Hurricane defense. And a, a, a very, I'll tell you what, this Miami defense is being tested time after time today, and they are doing one great job. Uh, this is really just ends up being a bad deci decision by Harbaugh. I mean, Cortez is absolutely in perfect position to make that interception. So Miami's got it back. First and 10 on its own 44-yard line, trailing in the ball game by a score of 12 to 7, 10 58 remaining. Bernie Kosar is in trouble. He fires out of the backfield. He finds, say hello to Willie Smith, who is back for his first reception of the day. Rodney Lyles in the stop. Smith sideline. And a doubtful for this game with an ankle injury after catching 15 passes in Miami's first two ball games. I, I thought that they had people open down the middle again, but you see uh, uh, the blitz comes in. Doug Mallory from his uh, strong safety position. Uh, he has to scramble a little bit and really make an excellent play. Second down and two coming up now for Miami. And Kosar gives it to Oliver. Oliver is going to wind up shy of that first down. So a third down now coming up for Miami, a third and one. They are down at the Michigan 47-yard line. Mike Mallory in on the stop. His brother injured in the first half after intercepting a Miami pass and also recovering a Miami fumble. So here's the third down play for the team. And they're only two for nine on third down conversion. Michigan looks like they're almost lined up offside. Here's Highsmith tripped up, but he's going to get the first down. Highsmith was tripped up in the backfield. This conference came flying in. Mike Mallory finally made the stop, but Miami's got it up for a first down at the University of Michigan 45-yard line. Well, this is just a great individual effort. Uh, not, not much room to run. He just breaks it outside, and then it's just a matter of speed. Good block right there by Oliver. Allows him to get outside. And Cochran almost made the, the game-saving play right there. But a first and ten. Big day for Heisman. Down at the 45-yard line of Michigan, Bernie Kostrock. In a lot uh -oh. of trouble, and he throws it out of bounds. Unofficially now, Bernie's 12 for 27 for 138 yards. You made an O-O because 
you think that ball was going out of bounds. I was, was saying, a if it didn't get out of bounds, it could have been another, could have been big time trouble. I think it's the first time we've, we've really seen him just throw the ball away today. Uh, and he does that so well when he doesn't have a, a receiver open. Kosar has been intercepted three times. Miami's got a second and ten at the Michigan 45. Michigan has a 12-7 lead, 9-48 remaining in this fourth quarter. The production over the middle, and he Brown at the 30, flags are dropped. Brown down at the 30, hauled it in, but there is a flag on the play. Garland Rivers in on the stop, and it's a holding call against the University of Miami. Boy, Miami, who, who had so many penalties in their first two ball games, uh, not many in this one, but when they've got them, they have hurt. That one would have been a first down down at the 30. Instead, the Hurricanes will have a second and 20 back at their own 45-yard line. 9.42 remains. Three penalties against Miami, but they have all hurt. This one negates a long game. The first one negated a long game into Michigan territory. The other one gave Michigan a first and goal at the five. That's right. Kosar setting up the throw. Oh, he throws it right into the hands of the defender by Hammerstein. And Hammerstein takes it down to the 23-yard line. The screen was set up perfectly, but Kosar just didn't throw the ball high enough. Great call in defense of Kosar. I think Hammerstein had been blocked, and while the ball was in the air, got up off the ground and grabbed it. Big interception for the University of Michigan. They've got the ball back at the Miami 24. Let's, let's see if we can find uh, Hammerstein. There he is right there, that one big arm. And I'll tell you what, we, how often do you see a lineman get a hand on a ball like that and, and not even come close to catching it? A senior That's got to be the biggest play of the game. Senior from Wapakoneta, Ohio. Comes up with a big one on first down. Michigan looking for more. Gerald White Gary. And White moves the ball from the 23 inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. A gain of five, second and five for the Wolverines who lead 12-7 with nine minutes remaining in the ballgame. Miami got the ball back when Julio Cortez intercepted. And now Hammerstein, fourth time. Kosar has been intercepted. This afternoon, here's White again to the 15, and that second effort, I believe, will give him an up for a Wolverine first down. George Myra Jr., the man in on the stop. You know, I just don't know how many times this defense can uh, uh, be put under these circumstances and, and not give up the, uh, the touchdown. It's the first down for the University of Michigan at the Miami 13, and it concerns Jimmy Johnson on the sideline for the University of Miami Hurricanes. This is Perryman, and he gets down to the 10-yard line. Kevin Fagan slowed him up, and Bruce Fleming brought him down. Second down and seven at the 10. And a look at Jim Harbaugh, his first start as a quarterback for the University of Michigan. And he is now 10 of 17 for 152 yards. Now it'll be interesting to see just how many chances Michigan takes in putting this ball up in the air. They've got to get some points up from this, from this field position. Three points would give him an eight-point lead. Here's the pitch out to Jamie Morris. Morris trying to get outside and finally taken down by Colbert Zane at the five-yard line. Ken Calhoun forced him further outside, very nearly made the tackle, and Bain came up with it. See, the problem now with running that wide right, if you throw a pass down, it's incomplete. Now you've got to kick that short field goal from that side of the field. Uh, so odds are that you might see Michigan just run that ball left, try to get the first down, and be in position to kick the field goal. Third down, four for the Wolverines at the Hurricane seven. 
Gerald White and Bob Perryman are the running back. And Harbaugh throw it to Bean in the end zone, overthrew him. And it'll go as a fourth down. Darrell Fullington, number 19, covering on the play. Oh, they were going for six. They were going for the ball game right there. Well, certainly you had to know that if they threw the ball, they would throw it in a position where uh, only the offensive player uh, would be able to make the catch. This is either going to be a touchdown or, or an incompletion. Um, had the defender in the, the position he wanted with his back to the ball, just overthrow it. Field goal attempt here by Bob Bergeron. To put the pressure on Miami from the 13th, 23 water, and it is good. A flag is dropped on the play. Hold on. Roughing the kicker. Roughing the kicker. This will be a first down. It'll give uh, Michigan a first down. Half the distance to the goal line. That means Three and a half yards away. But I believe that would end up being a first down. Bo is upset on the sidelines. I'm not sure what he's upset about because his team has three. Now, wait a second. You would not give them a first. Well, let's see if it would give them a first down. They need a four for the first down. They only get three and a half. But it is a first down. Michigan will throw out the three points that are already on the board. And roughing we, the kicker. See if we can see it right now. I believe coming from the right hand side of your screen. Right there. Good call. Well, well, that's terrible. What, you, can, man. you can hurt an ankle or a knee pretty easily uh, with the hit he took. But it's going to be close. We'll have to measure now. Well, when you're inside the 10, that can hurt you because you only get half the distance from the goal line. They were down at the 9. I'll tell you what, if this, if this gives them a first down, have you ever seen a team only have four penalties and have, have them hurt so much? Oh, Harbaugh was screaming first down, but uh, we have not gotten the indication yet. Well, the offense is coming back on the field. It looks to me like it's going to be... It'll be first and goal. Or fourth and empty. First down. It is a first down. Now you knew it was going to be close. We didn't see the, the measurement, but they got it by empty. Four penalties and four big ones. One of them, a five-yarder, gave Michigan a goal to go. They got the go-ahead touchdown there. The other two negated long plays. Kozar on passes. Perryman and White, the running back. White is the tailback. First and goal inside the four-yard line of the Miami Hurricane. Perryman takes it toward the goal line. He had stopped at the one. He puts the ball over, but his knee hit down outside of the end zone. It'll be second and goal. Bob Perriman, who has scored both Michigan touchdowns this afternoon, three yards and six yards, and he is looking for the clincher right here, and the ball is right on the goal line. Yeah, I don't know if it could be any closer uh, and not be over. Now this might, this will be a sneaker go up the middle, you, I would think. scored a third touchdown of the ball game and with seven minutes and one second remaining michigan has taken an 11 point lead which means miami needs two touchdowns to win their ball game take a look at it from right down around the line of scrimmage perriman has been the man they've gone to in the short yardage situation 6'2 225 pounds Quick off the ball, a former tailback, and he knows he smells the end zone down close. Well, here's Bergeron with the extra point attempt, and 
The conversion is good. So it's seven minutes and one second remaining. Following a Mike Hammerstein interception, Michigan goes 23 yards for a touchdown. Paramount in from the one. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Michigan 19, Miami 7. We'll be right back. So Miami, a team that has come from behind in the fourth quarter in their last five ball games, now finds themselves needing two touchdowns to win this one. J.C. Penny is back deep to receive the kickoff. 19-7, Michigan out front. Todd Sloppy sees the ball up. Well, this offense has shown us uh, some remarkable uh, abilities in putting that ball in the end zone. Uh, this, they'll be hard pressed to come back from this uh, deficit. This is going to be a tough one. Here's Penny, four yards deep, does the wise thing, elects to down it in the end zone. And it'll be a first contempt for Miami. The ball will be brought out to the 20 yard line with 7.01 remaining. And what's Perriman right here for this third touchdown? Well, and on that long drive for their, their second touchdown of the, of the day, they attack this left side of the defensive line. And in the crucial situation for the touchdown, they go right back at it again. Miami's got to move. They've got to move quickly. That was a seven-play drive. Only needed 24 yards following the Hammerstein interception. And Bernie Kosar is going to fill the air with football. And the win has really picked up now, and he'll be throwing against, against it. Stanley Shakespeare, first down Hurricanes, back to 32. Clock stop. Stanley Shakespeare, a senior from Boynton Beach, Florida. Five receptions this afternoon. 65 yards. This is a it's a pretty simple down and out. It's a it's a nice deep one and it's for a good game. I don't think Michigan wants to go into that complete prevent defense and let him just go down the field. Hosa, oh, great Willie pass. Smith at the 45-yard line. Another first down for the team. Willie back in the lineup. His second reception, Garland Rivers, comes in on the stop. That time, the rush was coming right at him. He looked it right in the face. He almost, he almost threw that ball as he was falling down, so he didn't have to take the big hit from the rush. We're going to go without a huddle. 24 yards to Smith. Block has been stopped. And a good start running right now with 6.49 remaining. Kosar again. This time, Eddie Brown cannot hold on to it at the 35-yard line. Goes incomplete. And it'll be a second and 10 coming up for the University of Miami Hurricanes. And I thought Eddie that time was just a little too concerned about making the catch and getting out of bounds. I think if he'd have went to his knees, uh, he'd have made the catch. Uh, the clock would have kept running. Six minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Well, these are the type of patterns that the defense is going to give you. Uh, the same one that we, we just saw Shakespeare run. Down and out. See, I think if he'd have went down, and he wanted to get out of bounds. Looks like he took his eyes off the ball momentarily. Here's Kosar going deep to Eddie Brown. Oh! Very nearly hauled it in. Goes with an incomplete pass. Garland Rivers defending on the play. Well, there was contact down there, but I... I, obviously, the officials felt like it was incidental and, and not caused by the defense. I thought Eddie stopped running for a second. Maybe to try and judge exactly how far that ball was going to be thrown. There's the contact right there. So it's a third down play coming up for the University of Miami. Only three for ten on third down conversions. Here's the contact that you speak of. But, of course, it's tough to tell at the thing. Contact right there. Both players going for the ball. On third and 10 for Miami. They trail 19 to 7. Post on. Eddie Brown couldn't hold it. It'll be fourth down coming up for the game. Post 14 for 33 now for 170 yards intercepted four times. The play that time made by inside linebacker Tim Anderson. An extremely deep drop on that pattern. Force that ball to be thrown high over his head, uh, too high for the reception. Third, fourth down and ten coming up for Miami. And one for two on fourth down conversion. And they need one right here. The ball game rise right here on this possession for the Hurricanes. 
Maybe he's shoving. Both guys in trouble. He throw it deep down the far side. Shakespeare, he's got it. Touchdown! Stanley Shakespeare! As Kosar was forced out of the pocket and very nearly sacked, he finds Shakespeare for the touchdown. 44 yards and the team to back of the ball game. Have you seen anything like these people? <laughs> this is unbelievable. What a great play. Running left, almost has to throw this ball sidearm. Forced out of the pocket. I thought originally he might be trying to run for the first down. It he's looks looking, like he's, he's going to have it. He's looking, he's looking. Yeah, I think he threw this ball as far as he could, running to his left. And yeah, what a catch. What? <laughs> now now they've got all the time in the world. That's right, 6.25 remaining. It's now 19-13. The Hurricanes need another touchdown. And the extra point attempt coming up by Greg Cott. This point is virtually a nothing point. It means nothing. It makes the score 19 to 14, and the Hurricanes are five behind with six minutes and 25 seconds remaining on a fourth down and 10. Coast guard to Shakespeare, 44 yards for the touchdown, 19-14. Michigan leads it. This is the Cat Sports Network. Spencer Ross and Steve Grody, we're back here at Michigan Stadium, 105,403 are on hand. And the Hurricanes are back in the ball game. The Miami Hurricanes football rights are granted to Cat Sports and are intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of Cat Sports and the Miami Hurricanes is prohibited. Kickoff time now. Steve Benny. A check at Mark Steeler. Sees the ball up at the 40-yard line. You know, when you consider that the wind is blowing hard enough to blow that ball off the tee, Kosar running left, throws the ball 50-some yards right on the dime. That <laughs> Stanley Shakespeare hauls it in. Shakespeare now with six catches, 112 yards. A scribbler picks up at the five-yard line. And up over the 25, near the 30-yard line on the return. Steve Johnson, and it'll be first and ten coming up for Michigan at their own 26. Still plenty of time here for the University of Miami Hurricanes, who are trailing in the ball game now, 19 to 14. The scoring drive was really one play. That's right. <laughs> it took them six, but it was a one-play deal. Well, they get Willie Smith with a good one. 24 yards, and that was down to the 44, but then first down nothing, second, third nothing, and then on fourth and 10 from the 44 for the touchdown. Here's first and 10 for Michigan. They'll keep the ball on the ground. Jimmy Morris getting up from the 21 to about the 23. Bruce Fleming coming in on the stop up to the 28. But I'll tell you what, it was Fagan once again. It penetrated the line of scrimmage and, and, and just completely uh, manhandled the play. Initial line of scrimmage, the 26. They're up past the 28. We'll call it second down and eight now for the Michigan Wolverines. The clock running. And there's that attendance figure we just gave you. The 54th consecutive crowd of over 100,000 people here at Michigan Stadium. Harbaugh's going to pass. He throws the screen. It's oh, oh, right there. Right. White. And a White has himself a first down. That's the pass play that, in my mind, really a running play uh, with a little screen. Well, it was a real nice call. Just a two-man, a short two-man screen, and really it was what, pretty well defense. Uh, White put his head down and just flipped the blockers and fell forward for the first. Clock is running. Five and a half minutes remaining. First down for the Michigan Wolverines, who are leading 19 to 14. over the 40 to the 43 yard line. A gain of four yards on the play. Joe Colbrand, number 48, leading the charge for the game. And it'll be second down and six coming up for Michigan. Just under five minutes, Miami Florida with two timeouts left. Uh. Bob Perryman, all three touchdowns for the University of Michigan, and what a day for him. And remember, they play today without their uh, 
top two fullbacks. Garrett out with a, a knee injury. Uh, Rice, who started uh, a lot last year, out with academic problems. Second down and six, and this is Gerald White, and a good defensive play by George Myra Jr., number 45, for the Hurricanes, who quickly closed the gap and came up with a tackle, and it sets up a third down now for Michigan at the 44. It'll be third down and five. They're four for 14 on third down conversion. Well, they'll want to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible. The, the clock begins to, to become a factor, although it's a passing you situation. It to, you give it to Miami. I don't. They only need about 30 <laughs> seconds. Dean goes wide to the top of your screen. You see it. And there's the story as far as the clock is concerned. 19-14, Michigan in front. Play action. And that did. Oh. is knocked away. Giovanni Johnson, that was. Almost had that ball that took a hard hit from the Hurricanes' Colbert Bain. And it goes as an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down coming up. Well, Bain is a red redshirt freshman uh, who they think is going to be an excellent player. This is, once again, is that long pass to the sideline from the opposite uh, hash mark. It's thrown right on the money. He almost makes a great reception. If not for Bain over there, that would have been another first down. Red Perriman is back to receive the pick of Monty Robbins. So the Hurricanes will get another opportunity. Oh, come up and field that. It's rolling toward oh, the goal. Let it go. Oh, Perriman picked it up. And it's just as much as it out. Red Perriman. Should have come up. As you said, Jimmy Johnson not happy with that. Not quite pulling his hair out of his head. But uh, a bad mistake there by Brett Perriman, who should have come up to field it, and then when it rolled into the end zone, he should have downed it. And the Canes would have had it out at the 20. Instead, they are back at the A9 yard line. Now, with the wind, uh, they're about to get a break on a, on a not-so-great punt. So they have plenty of time to come up and field that now. Try to make, I, I, I just think it's players try to make up for their mistakes, and that's obviously what happened. And they wind up compounding it. Who are you going to call? Bernie Kozar. <laughs> First and 10 for the Hurricanes, 91 yards away. And Kozar has a pass intercepted by Willis. Pass is intercepted by Rodney Lyles, and Michigan has come up with another big turnover. Lyles intercepting for a second time. Michigan fifth interception of Kozar this afternoon. A senior from, guess where, Miami, Florida, Rodney Lyles, comes up with a big one. Well, once again, Kosar, uh, I, I don't know who his primary receiver was. He had to look around quite a bit, and now this guy's right. I don't even know how he could see the receiver. Lyles was absolutely right in front of him. So here's the defense being put to the test once again for the University of Miami, and there's the hero of the moment, Rodney Lyles, with 3.28 remaining. Michigan has the ball at the Miami 11. Paraman moves forward to the 9, and the clock will continue to run. 19-14, Michigan leading, looking for the upset of the number one ranked University of Miami Hurricanes. Which we talked at the top of the show about Michigan notoriously being a, a team that starts slowly. They absolutely wanted Miami to come in here at 2-0 and rank number one in the country. No better situation to get your team ready to play the first ball game of the year than to have uh, the Hurricanes come in here. Second down and eight at the Miami eight-yard line. Gerald White is the tailback. This is White. Following turn and got a good block from an inside the five down to the three-yard line. Bob Perriman scored three touchdowns. What a key block right there. Bringing Gerald White down to the three. Well, and White makes a great cut to the outside, moves it back in, uh, dives forward for some extra yardage. They're in a good third down and short uh, situation now. Once you get outside, it's, it's all speed. And, of course, any, any quick, strong back has got the ability to, to cut back and find that hole. Hurricanes right here have to hold this. Michigan team to a field goal, and then perhaps the best they can come up with is with a tie. Two minutes remaining. Block is running. 
to the end zone. No, trapped in the backfield. And a break for the Hurricanes back at the 13-yard line. I was following Gerald White through the middle of that line. Harbaugh takes me out completely on that play and brought down behind the line of scrimmage and Ben Lowe. Well, this is certainly a surprising play. Uh, unusual for Bo Schembechler, I think, to, to put the ball up for grabs like this. I guarantee you that if that pitch would have been fumbled or knocked down by the Miami defense, and it almost was by a great play by Jones, it would have been the last time they'd ever done that close to the goal. It's Bergeron, 27-yard field goal attempt, and it is good. And Mirkicic has taken an eight-point lead as Bob Bergeron kicks one from 27 yards away to get Michigan an eight-point lead at 22 to 14. Well, the Michigan uh, the fans are up, and, and certainly uh, they have to be happy. But once again, just an outstanding defensive series for the Hurricanes uh, and still kept their team in a position to score a touchdown two-point conversion in a tie this uh, certainly would be Kosar's finest hour if he pulls this one out a minute 12 remaining in the ball game we want to give our thanks to Don Cannon the director of athletics here at the University of Michigan Will Perry the assistant athletic director Bruce Maddox the sports operations director the athletic director at the University of Miami, and Carl Smith, the sports information director, for all the help they provided to us here this afternoon on a beautiful day here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And it's going to be an even more beautiful day for the folks here in Ann Arbor if their Wolverines can hold on. But they've got Tony Kostrock to contend with. Todd Sloppy will uh, see it up at the 40. Hurricanes trailing by a score of 22 to 14. Bernie Kosar intercepted five times. And the Hurricanes pumping the ball away twice. That's seven turnovers. Here's Sloppy Skip. And it is taken by J.C. Penn. Penny at the 15, and he is forced back. Not much of a return. The Michigan team is fired up, and well, they might be. They've got an eight-point lead. We have a minute and seven seconds remaining in the ball game. And Miami is back at its own 14. And they love their defense today. And well, they might. And this time it is a standing ovation. Not one of those almost standing ovations. A deserved one. Yep. Bernie Kosar, 15 to 35. He's thrown for 214 yards, but then intercepted on five occasions. 107 remaining in the ball game. Look what Bernie's going to do. Over the middle, Highsmith couldn't hold it, deflected it up in the air, then looked around and saw Tim Anderson behind it, and he wasn't even trying to catch it. He wanted to bat it down because Anderson might have had to get another interception. Well, he had... Uh... He had Willie Smith wide open on the sidelines for a first down and out of bounds. Goes to go over the middle that time. 61 seconds remaining. As Eddie Brown moving out to the top of your screen wide. Shakespeare down at the bottom on second and 10. He's letting his zone over here. This is High Smith back to 20. He's looking to get out of bounds. He's not able to. Taken down at the 21 by Peter Hearn. It is a first down, so the clock will stop momentarily. At the 26 yard line, 46 seconds remain. Alonzo Highsmith, what a day he has had. 16 carries for 125 yards on the ground. Here's so strong. And it's intercepted by Rodney Lyles once again at the 40. Lyles third interception, and he's running the clock now. At the 35, and Michigan looks like they're going to pull off the upset. Six interceptions of Kosar, three by Rodney Lyles. Well, if you'd ever want to have a day against uh, the team from your hometown, Lyles has done it. Once again, uh, you know, the, the deepest Michigan defensive back is lined up about 45 yards. They're trying to hit over the linebackers before the safety, and that's just a real deep drop, and 
Right place, right time again. Bernardi still has two timeouts, but it really is all academic because Michigan will just run the clock out and pull off the upset of the top-ranked University of Miami Hurricanes playing their third game in less than two weeks. And here's Harbaugh just going down to the turf. What does Harbaugh do for an encore? First game here in Michigan, you say they're notoriously rough on their quarterbacks. And kick comes out, 11 for 21, 168 yards, runs the offense very well. And Kenny Johnson on the sideline for the University of Miami is just a little too much to overcome today. Well, not a bad start, is it? <laughs> I think he set some precedent for himself. He really, you're right, he has done an outstanding job. Miami taking his next to last timeout with 24 seconds remaining. The big story, though, the turnovers for Miami. Remember, next Saturday, over many of these same stations, you'll be seeing the University of Miami in West Lafayette, Indiana, against another Big Ten rival, the Purdue Boilermakers. All coming your way on Cast Television Sports. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, this Miami football schedule is the absolute most difficult schedule I have ever seen in college football. They're going to have a game in about three weeks against Florida State. As we look at Bo Schembechler in the sidelines, remember back a few years ago, Florida State had Nebraska, Oklahoma, uh, Penn State, Miami, and Florida. I think it's five to three. <laughs> I didn't know the game was thrown in there, too. But you know, the, the thing is, though, for the players, that's the kind of schedule you want to play. Sure. You want to play. You want to play the best. If you play 12 games, you want to play the best 12 teams in the country. That's what the players want. And then I think that's nice practice to one, the high school. Nice to get one breather in there every once in a while. Penalty against Miami. That's for the coaching staff. <laughs> now, the, now the coaching staff, those guys deserve breathers. Ball down at the 32, following the penalty against Miami, and once again, Harbaugh will undoubtedly just fall on the football. No need to take any chances. And that's exactly what he does. Miami called his final timeout. But it is really not going to make a difference. Here's the man of the hour, Jim Harbaugh, who has led Michigan to an upset of the top rank, University of Miami Hurricanes. Michigan leading it 22 to 14. They've got the ball back. Our executive producer of Cash Sports, Fred Botwinner. Produced by George Smith this afternoon. What a job George did down in the truck. And a great job by director Tom Williamson. Associate director Joan Hagel. Broadcast associates uh, Bruce J. Smith. Technical director David Mazza. And the audio by Felix Kuzuska. Facilities provided by Clarion Remote Television in Chicago, Illinois. Those six interceptions pulled off by Michigan ties the Wolverine record. It's Harbaugh down to the turf, and the clock will run out, and the Hurricanes have to look and watch because there's nothing they can do. Ten, let's listen to the crowd, count it up. Jim Harbaugh. There's Jimmy Johnson. He's disappointed. His team has absorbed its first defeat. 13 consecutive victories. Big hands with Bo Ken Butler. The final score. Once again, the University of Michigan, 22. The University of Miami, 14. We'll be back with a final word on today's game in just a a happy group of 105,000 here in Michigan. The Wolverines beating the Miami Hurricanes by a score of 22 to 14. Steve? Well, uh, we just found out that Miami's a little bit human. That's all that happened today. Uh, 
I, I would have loved to have seen this game played with not so many turnovers to, and really find out uh, who's the better team. Uh, but that's the way college football goes. Well, six interceptions, two fumbles, and the University of Michigan has beaten the University of Miami by a score of 22 to 14. We invite you to join us for our next University of Miami telecast as they go up against the Purdue Boilermakers at next Saturday afternoon in West Lafayette, Indiana, 2.30 Eastern. You stay tuned for that. For Steve Brody, Spencer Ross saying so long. Miami Hurricane football is a presentation of Cat Sports.